So uh, appreciate everybody being here today. A couple of our commissioners are not able to be here with us this morning, but we are recording this session. So Joe will have this up on our YouTube channel as quickly as possible, but we are not able to live stream this being an all day event. So a lot of our commission meetings, we actually live stream those, but we felt like Facebook would probably kick us off multiple times trying to do an eight hour live stream on a government site. So we knew that wouldn't work too well. So we are recording this, so everybody will be able to go back and watch this. But uh, we do have a busy agenda here today. And before we get started, I'll mention that each department that is listed, this is not all of the departments, but these are just the ones that we had time for today. Uh, we'll get 15 minutes to present and we'll keep time. And so the main goal here is for you to be able to tell your needs and your story for what you need for your department. Uh, there won't be any decisions made here today. There won't be any votes made here today. And there will still be a couple of additional public hearings that are required by state law that we will have in the coming weeks as well. So this is just uh, something new to uh, give us a head start on the budget and give the board members a little more insight of the detail and the request and be able to hear from a good number of the departments of their request. So at this time, I will lead us in our invocation, and then after that, we'll pledge to the American flag and to the Georgia flag. So bow with me if you would. Dearly Father, we just thank you for this great day, and Lord, just thank you for a great successful last week with Memorial Day and the Honey Beef Festival. And Lord, just thank you for those great events in our community. And Lord, we come to this time uh, before you to present this public work session on our budget process, and Lord, we just pray that uh, you be with us in this meeting and be with those that are presenting. Lord, we know this is a new process. We know there's going to be some nerves from those presenting that are not used to presenting. We just ask for your calming hand on each one of them to give them the confidence and the ability to come and present. And Lord, we just pray for your wisdom and guidance throughout this day. And Lord, just be with those that are unable to be here with us. In name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll pledge to our American flag and then to the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag to the principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, moderation, and courage. Thank you all. May be seated. And uh, first on our agenda today is our tax commissioner's office. And so Ms. Carolyn Walker and her team is here. So we'll ask y'all to step forward. And when you get about 10 minutes in, I'll hold up my hand as you've got five minutes to go, just to give you some indication of how you're doing on time. And so if the tax commissioner would like to come forward to the podium, you're up first. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So what do you want me to do? Just tell you what I'm doing? Yeah, they have a copy of what you've inputted into the okay. system. So, okay. So they Everybody can see what it. you're talking okay. about. Yes, go right ahead. All right. The main thing um, in salaries, all of that other than the wages is I have no control over any of that. So I put in an increase, hopefully about 4% is what I did on everything. And on my salaries, I did a 4% increase. I did the cost of living comparison. Uh, from the consumer price index, and um, and um, I'm hiring another employee that hasn't been on there, so that's the increase there. And on the technical and computer things, I am going to be going straight with RTC uh, for my putting my stuff on the cloud. I am not going to be using ArcNet. I, I want to be the administrator of my phone, my account. I have met with them at my insistence. I've got a bid to go with them, but I am not going to be using our name. And that's why I've taken that back. I don't know if I should. You know, the county took it off last year and was paying for it, but uh, I, I'm not going to be doing that. So, um, and the increases all through mine is basically 4%. So it brings it to 1647000 But that is taking back the technical. And also, I have figured in 
camera updates for security in my two offices. I need to be able to see the Fairview office, what's happening up there at all times. And I have a, a bid from DSI for that. So that's the increases. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Unless y'all got questions, that's it. Okay. That's my budget. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you, Ms. Karen. Now, if everybody can follow suit just like that, see. <laughs> okay, the next we have is our district attorney's office. So who's going to come speak to us today? Right. You can adjust that microphone if you need to. I'll have to raise it up a little bit. There you go. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, my name is Kevin Ball. I'm the acting district attorney. I'm filling in for your elected district attorney, Clayton Fuller. Uh, if you don't know, he is currently deployed to the Middle East. He's part of the National Guard and what's, what, what's going on over there. He's been deployed for the remainder of the year, so I'm filling in for our office. I will tell you all at the outset, I'm much more comfortable in a courtroom than I am in a, in a board setting, so I'll just try to picture you all like you're in a jury box, if that's okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, our office is part of a four-county circuit, which in Clemson, it's called the Lookout Mountain Judicial Circuit. So we cover Walker County in addition to Dade, Chattooga, and Catoosa counties. Uh, what that means is each county funds a portion of our overall budget, and that's based on county population. We used our latest census. So the good news for y'all is Walker County's portion of our overall budget is only 38%. Uh, the bad news for us is we have to do this four times. We have to ask permission in four different counties to get things done, which can kind of gum things up for us. Uh, before I get into our overall budget request, I did want to kind of let y'all know some of the things that's going on in our office, and I'll try to be brief, brief about this. And I know Commissioner Whitfield and some of the other county executives kind of know the issues we are facing right now, but our office is in a little bit of a personnel crisis uh, last year, we lost six assistant district attorneys and the elected district attorney. Uh, the elected district attorney became a judge. The other six is the more concerning issue because we lost them to other jobs in prosecution. Um, if you all know the name from the news, Fonny Willis, she is the Fulton County district attorney. You may know her from various things that's going on in the news. She took two of our people and Mr. Johnson, here with the public defender's office, his chief assistant, uh, she poached uh, for her work at home program, which is basically Fulton County has enough funds to pay attorneys that are not from Fulton County to work from home uh, and do a fraction of the overall caseload. And we lost two employees and they lost one to that program. And just so you have an idea of what the issue and what we're competing with is, uh, the quota we were told from some of our employees that went to that program is they have to draft an average of 10 cases per week. Now, just so you know what that means in terms of Walker County, last year in Walker County, we opened files on over 1,800 defendants, and we only have three full-time people right now because we're shorthanded in Walker, which means your three Walker ADAs are handling 600 cases each. If they use the Fonny Willis, you know, 10 cases per week, that would get them to about 200. So they're, they're, they're drafting a third of the workload and getting paid the same as our people were. Uh, the other folks we lost were to other uh, DA's offices. And just so you all know how the salary system is structured, basically the closer you get to Atlanta, the more the counties pay. There's a state pay scale, the sort of the baseline minimum that the counties that are the farthest extremes of Atlanta pay, and that's set by the Prosecuting Attorneys Council. But as a matter of practice, the closer you get to Atlanta, they pay supplements and they, they pay, they're basically off the pay scale. For example, if I were to leave right now and go to Fulton County, I could probably make twice as much as I make out here. And I don't want to do that because I'm, I'm from this area and I was born here and I want to continue to do that. But to compete with what we're dealing with, last year I met with Commissioner Whitfield and with some of the other uh, county executives, and what we did is, because we had six open positions, we sacrificed two of our open positions to fund supplements for our employees to basically try to get competitive with what everybody else is doing. Uh, well, one of, I want to emphasize that that was not additional uh, monies that we asked the counties to impose. This was self-funded by sacrificing funds that have already been allocated for our office. Uh, we've been trying to recruit 
it, we're, we're not in a substantially better position this year. We tried recruiting on law school campuses. This is something we may, uh, at a later hearing when the full board is present, I may ask to address y'all uh, with some other things we're looking at trying to do to, to get competitive with that. Uh, we were able this year, uh, and this was a matter of recruiting, one of the public defenders from Mr. Johnson's office uh, got tired of doing that line of work. Uh, wanted to come over and try the prosecution in, so I want to make clear we're not poaching them. They, they came to us. But I will note for y'all's purposes, uh, when we discuss this in the future, he did have to take a pay cut to come work for our office. Um, so this, this is something we're going we're gonna to be continuing to ask to address, and we want to probably meet with y'all at a future board hearing to, to kind of talk about some of the ideas we have for addressing that. As far as next year's budget, it's it's based it's a it's an increase overall circuit wide of about eighty thousand dollars. Walker County's uh, portion is just over thirty thousand of that, and that's based on three primary factors. Uh, the state we generally follow what the state does because we try to treat our state paid employees and county paid employees the same. Uh, the state uh, increased the pay scales for all of the positions across the board by four percent this year. If we followed that. Um, Last year, the second sort of the second reason is last year, after y'all approved the budget, they came out with a new pay scale for our victim witness advocates. And what those are is those are the people we have in our office. We have administrative assistants and victim witness advocates in addition to attorneys. The victim witness advocates are in charge of dealing with our victims and making sure our witnesses come to court. We had to adjust what we were paying our administrative assistants to make sure there wasn't a pay discrepancy with our people who had been here a while. So that's another small portion of the increase. And so sort of the, the bigger issue we were facing is our VOCA grant, which is the Victims of Crime Act. We have a federal grant that funds most of our, at one time it funded most of our victim advocates. It's a federal grant that continues to get cut every year. We had a substantial cut last year. Uh, it was going to be circuit-wide a, about a $115,000 cut circuit-wide. Uh, we anticipated this with last year's budget. We cut a position, and I'll, I'll give a lot of credit to Ms. Brown, who was our office manager. She did a lot of work with the numbers to make sure this wasn't a huge hit on the counties because it could have been an enormous hit. But we cut a position. We moved some people around such that the hit to the county is only going to be about $15,000 based on the cuts that we had. The rest of our, I mean, probably about, of our overall request, probably about 90 to 95 percent is all going straight into personnel. Of course, we face the same issues everybody else does in terms of inflation and the cost of gas, the cost of supplies going up. But the, the increase we're asking for is going right into personnel. And I'll go ahead and tell you all, with, with the uh, shortages and the, the open positions we have, we're, it's pretty well guaranteed we're not going to spend what you allocate. Right now, this year, we're projected to not spend, we're about to have a surplus of about $166,000 just from Walker County that we're not spending this year just because of all the open positions. So that's, that's kind of our presentation. If the board has any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. So, so I have a question. Yes, sir. So I'm kind of just looking at the bottom line. In, in 2024, your, your budget was 747000 and you're requesting seven seventy nine thousand. Yes, sir. So about a four point three percent increase. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, that, and the only points of increase were those three we were talking about. In addition to the supplies, you know, realistically we could probably hold serve, but we, we don't want when we actually do fill those positions, we don't want there to be an enormous jump for the county as well as sure. it comes to that. Okay. Okay, that's very good. Thank yes, sir. You. No, I, I just I kind of I think you just answered that for me. The four percent or four point three, you said, Brian, uh, and, and that is covering that. That's a four percent for employee compensation. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's probably based larger. On, yeah, the, the increase is all based on the three, primarily the three areas I covered. Plus the we, we did add some of the non personnel based on some of the increases with due to inflation. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, I'm Emily Sadler with the Animal Shelter part of Animal Services. Bailey Clements with Animal Control. Okay. okay. So this is our first time doing this, so bear with us. Um, our budget, we're asking for a slot increase, not very much. Um, we've got it broke down by line items where we're asking for our increases in our overall budget. 
So, um, budget line item 511300 is overtime. Um, we're asking for a $5,000 increase over the previous budget due to an increase in after hours emergency calls that animal control's having to run. <clears throat> I know we're very close to meeting that line item already this budget year. So an increase would help us with those after hour emergency calls. And then um, disability short term, social security contributions, and Medicare general. We're asking for um, on disability short term, a $900 increase. There uh, was possibly a miscalculation from last year to cover the annual cost of short term disability. And then social security contributions, a $1,300 increase over the previous year to increase um, the overtime personnel cost that goes back to what we were talking about a second ago. And then Medicare General, a $300 increase over the previous budget year um, due to also an increase in overtime. And then um, line item 522100 which is cleaning and service disposal. We're asking for a $700 increase over the previous year budget um, because we've had an increase in disposal volume at the landfill. And then um, <clears throat> line item 531100 is general supplies and materials. We are asking for a $6,000 increase over the previous year budget um, just due to the increase in volume and intake at the shelter that we're handling and bringing in and the cost of animal food. In the end, line item 531200.10, which is energy, water, and sewage. Um, we're asking for an $800 increase over the previous year budget due to a higher volume of water usage. Um, got a lot of cleaning going on. <laughs> and then I think that pretty much sums up what we're asking for. So it looks like it's an overall increased request of $17,000 that we're asking for for animal services. Any questions? Questions? Did, did you include any raises in here? Yes. Cost of living? I think we do have some wiggle room in our personnel budget for raises, cost okay. of living raises. Okay. I think that's already in there. Okay, very good. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, See, that wasn't bad. Good job, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mr. Jad Johnson, Public Defense, if you'd like to come up. Johnson. I'm the circuit public defender here in the Lookout Mountain Judicial Circuit. Like Mr. Boss said, uh, our offices are similarly situated in that we cover uh, Walker County as well as Catoosa, Chattooga, and Dade counties. So uh, this is something we have to do four times a year uh, to the different uh, counties. Um, as far as, and, and the way our office works, just to give you a general overview. Uh, part of our funds are provided by the state of Georgia and part of our funds are provided by the counties. That which is provided by the counties are broken up on a prorated basis based on population. Uh, when the office began in 2004 and 2005, uh, the circuit public defender at the time, Mr. David Dunn, had developed uh, in conjunction with the county governments at the time a formula to uh, distribute those funds uh, accordingly. Um, and that formula remained unchanged until two years ago when uh, I, uh, after some questioning by some of the other counties, uh, retooled the, uh, the formula. And so uh, beginning last year's budget and then with this year's budget, uh, it's in line with the 2020 census. 
um, the monies that the counties pay for personnel, which is by far the vast majority of our expenditure, um, the money that the counties pay for personnel goes to the state of Georgia, and the state of Georgia is the one that actually cuts the checks to all of the public defender employees. Whether you're uh, county funded or state funded, whether you're an attorney or an administrative assistant or other support staff, your paycheck comes from the state of Georgia, you get benefits from the state of Georgia. No one is a county employee of Walker County, Catoosa County, or any other county. Um, therefore, as some of you may know, our office, like the DA's office, has been short-staffed for several years now. I couldn't tell you the last time we were fully staffed. Currently, we are four uh, attorneys short of our uh, fully, being fully staffed. Generally, we should have 11 attorneys on our staff, and uh, we are four short as of today. Um, the, and, and therefore, the money that is budgeted for uh, things like the, the personnel costs that the counties pay to the state of Georgia, at the end of the year, there's a lot of that money left over that didn't get spent. It's budgeted for, in case I get to hire somebody, but if not, then that money is left over and comes back to the counties in the form of a reimbursement. Um, so that's generally how the, and, and there's also uh, other operating expenses, you know, with supplies and, and that sort of thing. Um, but that's a, a very minute portion of the bill. Um, I am, as probably every other department, asking for a small increase just to keep up with inflation. Um, so the attorneys and the other support staff can have an increase uh, in their salary. Um, as Mr. Ball said, and as I've explained, it's very difficult to have, uh, to attract people to come to this area for, uh, for jobs, um, it, especially as an attorney. We've, we've not had any problem filling administrative roles, uh, but uh, attorneys, it's been extremely difficult um, attracting when you've got the allure of the big city and the paychecks that come with that. Um, it's hard to compete with that, uh, but uh, we're we're trying our best, and I think I think we have done well with my office with help from the counties on and having competitive salaries, but the, just the people aren't there. So. Um, like Mr. Boss said a few years ago, I defunded a position. Um, they, they have done something similar, uh, took the money that was allocated and redistributed it among the people who were here, uh, just so without any further cost to the counties, uh, give everyone a, a, a pay increase. It had been my hope, not this budget, but next budget, to have that position refunded, but you know, we're, we're now further in the hole than we were before. We had two prospects that ended up not panning out. I thought I was going to be able to hire two people uh, and only be one person down by this point. Uh, but it seems that we're going backwards now. So, um, so like I said, I'm not asking for much of an increase, just, you know, uh, something in the personnel, basically only just to keep the employees that we have um, satisfied so that they don't look to try to seek greener grass elsewhere. Uh, but I don't have any, I mean, I've, I've given you the, the spreadsheet. I so if you have any questions. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, it's not about your budget. I'm kind of learning about your, about your what you do there. Sure. So you're four attorneys short out of 11. You're allocated 11, that right, correct? Yes. So that's for all four counties, right? Correct. Correct. Do, do you have the counties that work, that live and work in the other four counties, or do they all work out of your office there in the Fed? No, we have we have a physical office in all four of our counties. Okay. And, okay, I understand. All right, I just wanted to. But you do have them travel from time to time. Oh yes, yeah. From all and it's, especially now that right. You know, so for example, under ideal circumstances, I would sort of stay put and do a lot of administrative things. But, you know, I'm the resident 
attorney in Dade County right now, so I've got juvenile court and I've got bond hearings and probation revocations that I've got to deal with. Usually I'd like to not have to deal with those things so I can deal with things like budgets and meetings. Right. Um, but you know, it is what it is when we're, when you're this far in the hole, you know, I've got to step in and, and fill the, fill the, the hole on the line. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, uh, all of our attorneys basically are going to have to travel to other counties in the four county circuit to, to cover shortfalls. Hey, Jeff, what's your, uh Ballpark, what's the increase? I, I'm not seeing last year, so I'm just curious the ballpark to me or percentage on the increase if you, sure. if you got that with you. What I had uh, asked for last year, what I'd requested last year, uh, was a total of 995, 662 and some change. And this year, I'm asking for uh, 1,018,562. So about 23,000 or so total budget. I couldn't tell you what the percentage is though. That's, that's <laughs> I just was curious of some numbers to look at. So that's perfect. That's, that's what I had requested last year. Okay, perfect, thank you. There's some other stuff in that packet that probably wouldn't need to be discussed later. I'll just put it all in there. This year I'm seeking a budget of $155,600. That's up from 2024 budget at $107,500. Uh, it's hard to live on $34,000. And... Uh, my staff and I have worked hard to bring this office up to where it needs to be. We've had no complaints that I know of from the public or the commissioners. Well, me and Commissioner Shannon, we butt heads every now and then, but at the end of the day, we're still friends. But it's hard to live off that kind of money, $34,000 a year. I don't know anybody can live off that. So I've asked my salary to go up to 60, Terry's would go up to 30, and then my deputy corners would be at 250 a call instead of 200. Something else we need to address, I, it's not in that budget, but it could be in expenses, I guess, but the cremation rate is going up for us on indigent care. We've got a lot of people, I think this year, Shannon, I didn't put the totals to it, but I think this year I've had more than I had last year. Uh, but that's just something that the county has set aside to help people that don't have. We got a lot of homeless people. I can't find families for them. I can't do anything. So the county takes care of them through cremations. So uh, I'm going to need two more vehicles in the future. Uh, we got one that's well, two of them is well over 200,000 miles. One of them, every time you slam the door, the hole inside the door up falls out and rust is in a tailgate. The only way it stays up is for the camper shell to be locked. So, if y'all got any questions for me, feel free. So on your uh, deputy corners that are paid by a call? Chief deputy don't. Chief deputy Terry right. Robertson's on salary. But the other two deputies get paid per call. Okay, and so prior that was how much per call? 200. And I'm asking to go up for 250 this year. And prior to that, didn't we just raise that this past year? Uh, like it, when I first took when I first took office, it was 175, and then in 2000 or 2002, we went up to 200. I think it was 2002. I'd have to go back and look, but yeah, I was thinking it was in this FY24 budget. I'm thinking in the current budget, we went from 175 to 200. Yeah. That that could be possibly right. I didn't even put a, I didn't even look at it to be honest. So you're asking to go from two hundred to, to two fifty if we can. Yeah. Also the AGGC uh, guidelines are in there for corner salaries, a corner of uh, our jurisdiction and, and mileage and territorial plus the population is uh, don't fall over. It's eighty seven thousand dollars a year. I'm asking for sixty. And I know Mr. Hart, we don't just go out and out somebody deceased. 
we have prayer with that family. We stay to the funeral home, gets there, and helps the funeral home. Mr. Hart saw that firsthand. We I'm do well that. familiar too. Huh? I'm well familiar with the Carter's yeah. office. So, you know, we just don't go out and pronounce somebody deceased and walk off. We stay to the job's done. I'll wait to the hospital. I make every call to the hospital night and day. I meet with the families and take care of their loved ones. Uh, as of January, uh, I've made all the trips to Atlanta except two, and I didn't have anybody to cover. Patusa County Corners, Day County Corners, Walker County deputies were in school, so I couldn't leave the county. Plus, I was guarding two other counties. So I stayed and I had to use the third party. I, I can't get rid of the third party totally, because I never know if we got a vehicle down, if we got two people on vacation or whatever, I will not leave Walker County unattended and without a corner. You may want to pull that microphone back down to you just a little bit. There you go, that's probably good. All right, you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, I, I sent you all an email, give me kind of a breakdown of, of the uh, salary part and what's, what was needed there. Biggest thing in that, of course, is adding someone. If this uh, House Bill 581 passes, it takes us from going from uh, a fair market value to actually three values that we'll have to keep up with. So we anticipate some extra work on that part. If it doesn't pass this November, <coughs> we're just not gonna need that person. We'll just stay where we're at, but we just want to get prepared just in case. Um, our overall request, and we've made various adjustments to different different things, um, is probably around 122,000. Yeah, 122 or 54 overall. So. Uh, by going through this a little bit. And I do have some questions on some things that we're getting charged for that I'm not sure about. Like, um, one of the things that we did increase, of course, is uh, the vehicle repairs with all that going up. And um, we know that parts are more expensive, plus getting charged with the time. Um, so we increased that one to uh, from 53.76 to 6,000. Now the rental of equipment and vehicles, we, we don't know what that is. We, we have no idea what that is, but we've got charged uh, $3,100 on that, but we don't know exactly what that, that uh, includes. So we put 6,000 because we, we weren't sure we were basing that off of the uh, halfway mark of what was being charged to us. But uh, if y'all can figure that out. Yeah, it is one that's very confusing, but it's this rental of equipment and vehicle uh, copiers. And I don't know why that's a, an accounting governmental term, but that is the per click or per copy uh, for all of the, the copiers being used, where y'all were by a toner. Okay. Before now you're playing on a per copy basis. Yes. That's where that gets expensed. Uh, it's, it is, it's an odd name, but so that is for yeah. the, the copiers. Well, you would know more about that than we would because we don't see that. Yeah. So that yeah. number is definitely. Yeah, that comes in on a master billing. Us. One bill for and it breaks out for each department. Yeah, that one's always confusing. Okay. Okay, that, uh, down on communication website, we, uh, we increased that a little bit to, to 966. Uh, the reason for that is they surprised us with an increase this last time, and we based this in our increase off the percentage that they had uh, sent us uh, last year, and uh, we're just putting that just in case, just in case, because we had to pull money from one of our other, other spots to uh, uh, balance that out. So. Uh, Took it from. I think we took it from vehicle yeah. uh, repairs. Okay, so uh, yeah, we had to move stuff around to actually make that um, that payment. We were shocked. We were surprised with it. 
and, and the, they won't give you a number. They just say it may come, and you may get it. So, uh, so we we're planning on that. That's why that that little bit of increase right there. Uh, the communication postage. I, I wasn't sure about that either. We don't know. Can you, can you give us some idea of what where that's coming from? Postage machine. We do, but so we don't have, have access to yes. But have we don't have key in, and so that comes in also on a master billing for all the departments by right. code. Okay. So it's based off your actual usage for any U.S. postage that you use through the meter system. Okay, so so would we need machine. to be increasing that or just? I would think it probably needs to be increased a little bit because I think postage is scheduled it's, to go up again. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah, that's it. And we, we did increase that to twenty five hundred from the one thousand. So. Uh, next thing is the advertising in newspaper. So we, we put 500 in there just in case. If we do have to hire someone, then there's going to be that advertising process that we're going to have to go through and have to pay for that. But if we don't hire that person, we don't need it. But it needs to be there. So The printing and binding, we, we increased that from 32,000 to 35,000 because, of course, postage, materials, and everything is increasing. So uh, we, uh, we, won't, we don't want to be uh, uh, in the hole on that next year when that happens around uh, after on January 1st, we send personal property notices out, or not notices, the uh, return forms. And then uh, in May, we send both the real property and the uh, personal property notice of assessment out. So uh, everything's going up as far as that goes, as far as post office. And uh, that does include postage because with our vendor, when they give us uh, an amount, it includes the postage, the envelopes, the amount of papers and all that kind of thing. She did, she did let us know uh, that the uh, cost of materials is going up. So uh, we, they, uh, they absorbed it for us this year, <coughs> and then uh, she said the next year be prepared with, with that and postage, everything going on up. Then the, uh, the, the travel in general, we, that's for uh, our, our classes to hotels and, and all that. This year we went to caveat, had to stay off of off of site, and we were able to get, you know, our uh, cost of hotel down a little bit on that to around two hundred dollars a night for the the whole board and and Angela and myself, and then uh, the hotel that we're staying at that's attached to the to the uh, site actually went up to four hundred dollars a night. So uh, we expect the others to follow. It's coming next, next year. Caveats where we learn about the uh, law changes and how it's going to affect all of us. So, uh, so we increased that because things are just going up. We got uh, inflation, I guess you'd say, from, uh, I don't want to get in too much depth on that. I might be talking about the White House for a long. Uh, but we did increase that to be safe. Uh, we had one that was supposed to go with us, and we scheduled her to go somewhere else to help keep that cost down. And we, we can't do that, that next year at all. She will have to go with us next year. Um, next one, dues and fees for board members. We increased that from 22000 to 24550 That's a... Uh, uh, Increase for for them on their park slot. Is there a uh, 850, 24850. 24850. I'm sorry. All right. That gives them a fifty dollar a meeting increase, and in, when they meet, and they haven't had one probably in eight or nine years. And there's also room in there for if we have to have special call meetings. Mm -hmm. So we have to have some of those 
couple of times a year for certain situations. See your dues and fees on professional. We increased that from 240 to 825 because those things are going up like uh, IAAO membership. Uh, MLS, MLS is one of the most important tools that we have and uh, we use, use it uh, quite a bit. And it gives us insight on, on what's selling and what all went on with that property and helps us to qualify or disqualify sales and it's just a, a, an additional tool without hiring an additional employee. So uh, education and training in general, we'd increase that from 7,400 to uh, 10,000. Reason being they're, they're doing more and more classes what's called short course. They're doing less cl classes out in the general area if I take a 40 hour class, or our employees will take a 40 hour class in like Macon, that's a hundred dollars, right? So, so they don't have that many of them, so they fill up like that. We, we wind up missing it. So uh, now they're moving these things to a short course. Short course is $550 for the same hundred dollar class. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we've, played that game where we've tried to, uh, uh, you know, avoid that because that's expensive but, and we wound up hurting ourselves where we've got people bunched up now in one year uh, trying to take these classes. We're, we're fortunate in that we have half of our employees go one year and half go the next year. Right? But what's happening is it's pushing this first half, part of, part of them over in the second half. So, so we're winding up getting ourselves behind on, on the education part, which is required us by state law. So uh, we changed that for that reason. Uh, while that their $550 is beyond me, so, uh, but that's what, uh, what they do. Well, those are actually handled through the University of Georgia. So there you go. That's, that's why the increase on that. General uh, supplies and material, uh, we 10,000 to 13,000. We give out a slight increase because, of course, with, with materials going up, that's just natural. The uh, next line there, that general supplies and materials, is a second line that ends with the 45 there. Uh, we thought that was taken out, we, but we're getting some of our things, uh, our uh, bills placed over in there. They shouldn't be there. They should be up in that, that other one. We were told not to use that number, and uh, I guess, and, and it is very confusing when you're uh, putting those accounting numbers on there, account numbers, and I think probably, I have went back and verified mine. I'd never used that number, but they've included those top two right there, the 10,000 and the 2,000. And so I just zeroed that uh, account ending in 45 to zero and made just a $1,000 increase in our supplies. And that's what we use, copy paper and, you know, things like that throughout the year, measuring tapes and, you know, stuff like that. So that's... Uh yeah. That one. The next one's the general supplies. The uh, the one that ends with eighty. That's our internal. That's the the uh, uniforms. Uniform. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. That's uniform. So I got my note out there. Uniforms. It was a situation last year where we we uh, we have to have ourselves identified when we go out in public. And that's, that's one of the things that, uh, that we, we put in place for uh, identifying our employees while they're out in public. So uh, the, we, the shirts, this many employees, they wear out over time. They last for a while. We, we, we're, we're thankful for that. We don't always use this every year. But what happened this past year is we, we had to wind up purchasing new shirts 
and uh, it was right before the October beginning of the next fiscal year, Angela had sent it down and told them to put that on the previous year's budget, and, and we were told no. So they put it on our new budget, and it wiped our new budget out. So, so we weren't able to make those purchases. So we, we basically didn't use it at all the year before. Now we're trying to catch up in, in this coming year, and then the next year we'll go back down. So, so I had to order like quite a few, and my plan was to do it at the end of the physical year, and then when we rolled over in October, order the second half so everybody could kind of get new shirts at the same time. So I ordered uh, for 2023, I ordered enough to cover the $500 budget in September. And I always mark as the year starts to end down so that they can be aware that that goes on that previous budget. And then when we rolled into October, I was going to order the rest of them and then I was told that we couldn't do that because the account, the uh, was it the accountant or what was the guy, the auditing guy, had already come. And I'm like, well, yeah, but that m money should have been there. And so we ended up having $54 of our, going over $54. And now our 24 budget is wiped out because that's what they used and they wouldn't let us use the, the 500 from 2023. Because we have a couple of jackets that we have to order, and we have about four people that still need shirts. So that's why I did that. The, the uh, books and periodical general, uh, those will include our the law books. When they come in, they haven't increased in a while. Uh, we get those every year, updates, and we, we're kind of afraid that they're going to do that. So we wanted a little bit of cushion in there. Also, with our uh, Marshall's Field Pricing Guide, we, we have that in there. Our aviation... Our aircraft is in there, too. Hmm? Our air, a, aircraft is yeah. going up to... Aircraft okay. Yeah, to 825, so we included it. 825. Yeah, the, uh, the aircraft... Uh, uh, valuing guides, those have went up, and uh, we, we do have to uh, increase because of them. But, but these are things we have to, to use to be able to, uh, to to value these properties, whether they're personal properties um, or uh, or real property. We we have multiple ways of valuing our properties, so we have to stay on top of it. Uh, so if you don't. Your ratio studies are low, and uh, we don't want to be in that situation again. We're in a good spot right now. So, uh, so this this is very important, it's an important part of what we do. So that's the only thing that, that we have. So. Anybody have any questions for Terry? One question. So, in your salary line on the top of the first page, that's a ninety-one thousand dollar difference. Does that include the new employee you anticipate hiring, or is that just the wages? That's uh, the uh, raises, too. That's the raises and adding a new employee. Yeah. Did you Sorry. get the email? I did. Yeah. yeah. I did uh, but but all, that's all that's included in that, in that line, Everything's correct? Everything's included in that. So. Okay. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this. Any questions? I think we're good. Thank, Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll let you uh, introduce yourself and what department you're from. Okay, I'm Cindy Hollingsworth and I'm from Magistrate Court. Judge Thompson's on vacation this week, so um, really we don't have hardly any changes. The main thing that cha is going to change, of course, is going to be salaries and some of that is because of the, the judges. Uh, they got an increase, I think, in like the 4% COLAs. But um, other than that, the only real change we ha have asked for is our technical computer services, our um, case management program has increased $50 a month. So we're just asking for that to be increased, that $600 to cover that. And um, that's what we use to keep up with all of our records in the magistrate court. 
And then um, the travel expense this year, we didn't, we haven't used it all so far because our judges were able to do some online training. But next year we are going to have to do that. We didn't ask for an increase, but when the new judges that we're going to have coming in because of Judge Heiss will be going to a superior court and we'll have to have new judges. So they will have to go, so we could at some point have to ask for that, but, but she doesn't want to change that at this point because we're hoping that will cover it. Um, and really, I think that's about it. I, we have had more people this year have uh, needed uh, interpreters. And that's a thing that we don't ever know, so that could come up that we might in the future have, you know, sometime during the year ask for some more money for that, but we're not going to just ask for it at the beginning because we don't have any idea. So but it's trending that way, though. It is trending that way. This year we've had more than we have in the past, and uh, we are seeing that more, and so that could be like the only thing. But other than that, that's really all we're asking. We're not asking for anything else, so... Any okay, questions? Well, well, good. Well, Magistrate always does a great job with their budget, yes. and y'all do really well working within your budget. So yes, we try to. We appreciate all that y'all yes. do with your budget. Yes, thank you. Any thank questions you. from the board for Anybody? No, sir. Let her go. Well, thank you for making it easy for uh, me. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So that is just, uh, I didn't put every line item in there, just the ones I'm wanting to increase or decrease. And we also have a new line item in there to recoup the funds for engineering services because we do charge um, fees to the consumer when they come in, whatever our engineering fees are, we charge them that plus $300. So as far as, do I need to start? Yeah, go right ahead. So on this uh, proposed or this uh, requested budget, there is a, to the wages and of course to all the healthcare, Medicare, and to the 401A contributions, there's a 5% increase on that. That is not 5% um, across the board. That is just the average I would like to give the department. Um, some would get more and some would get less. So that is included in there. And so that, that I gave you is just a breakdown of 2004 budget and then the requested budget for 2025 and then the amount uh, to your far right there that it will increase or decrease. Um, so the overall uh, increase would be $20,100 to the total budget, which our engineering funds are probably going to look at bringing 7,500 to 8,000 back into the budget. So roughly 8,000 increase for the physical year of 2025. And that's all inclusive. That's your that's building inspection, planning, and zoning. Yes, sir. That's stormwater. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. That's uh, all three departments there, and then kind of a breakdown. Like I said, I did not put every line item in there, just the ones that I'm wanting to increase or decrease, which is, there was just one item in there to de decrease uh, due to the fact of over the last several years, um, we're not even uh, a quarter of that on the, on the cell phone stuff. So I just looked at what we're trending for for this year and where we were last year um, and so that's why I did that. Looks good for, the, for those, those, those size of the departments and what we got there is not bad at all. Good, good job on that job. Thank you. Yeah, I know we're not part of the enterprise fund or general fund so technically we don't make money but we do bring in revenue to cover our budget each year. Questions for John Percy? No, sir. Keep up the good work. Thank you for the information. Yes, sir. Thank you. All. Thank you, John. Okay, we're going to jump ahead here so we don't have to be here all afternoon because our building, our facilities was actually scheduled last. He kept getting bumped because we kept adding. So we're going to bump him up here before lunch today while we've got some time and we can get these knocked out quicker and in the day earlier than we first anticipated. We moved him up and got him ahead so he can buy lunch. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, state your name in the department. My name's Todd Bird and I'm the facilities manager. 
All right, what I'm requesting is a 9.21% increase, which is $192,300. That is a cost of living increase for my department of 29,000. That is a wage salary. I would like to add an additional staff member to our department. That's $55,000 increase. Then there is a salary reimbursement that is in my budget that needs to go over to the Civic Center, which would be 30,000 taken out of my budget. That would be a $35,000 increase on employee benefits to cover health care taxes, retirement, Personal engineering fees, $40,000 estimated engineering costs on ongoing of Coach America Bill. A $30,000 increase estimated attorney fees for legal services provided by Kimberly Clark for the Coach of America Bill. Technical contractual service, that's a $4,000 increase over current costs associated with fire detection suppression systems for county buildings need to increase up to $35,000 for building repairs. That's just to cover the cost of ongoing increases in material to repair buildings. General supplies, that's a $3,500 increase over the current cost. That's just because of material costs being up. Plus we're adding another building, of course, the voters register. Same way on that $4,000 increase that's for cost of energy for that building twenty thousand dollar increase for the elections office on electricity and covering that building a two thousand dollar increase for propane a two thousand dollar increase for the cost of gasoline capital vehicle that's a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar reduction that is in my budget for the purchases of vehicles. That should be able to be taken out of splash in this next year. Capital furniture, that's a $17,000 increase on equipment for a new elections office, new furniture. It'll probably cost the whole budget of 25,000 just to supply that building and furnish that building when it is up and ready to be moved into. And that's what I've got, gentlemen. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to turn that up. I think they can hear me pretty good. I'm usually kind of loud yes, anyway. Uh, yeah, just uh, on, the, on the addition for the, the member, what are you looking for there? I'm looking to try to find a skilled laborer in, that's got some plumbing background. A little bit of just a general. Just general contractor, okay. yes, that can help. Uh, I am down a staff member right now. Right. And I would like to get an additional staff member to pair together because you, you need two oh, on a crew. You can't very well send a, a single person out by themselves. It's not safe for them and you get more production done yep. if you can pair two. Yep. And that's that's what I was looking for. Like I said, kind of a general labor that hopefully had some plumbing background. We're kind of short in that in my department mm -hmm. as far as experienced people that understand plumbing and taking care of plumbing. Right. We got a good carpenter, we got an excellent electrician. So if I could get a plumber, would be a great asset to the county, I think. Any other questions? Any other questions? No, no, sir. Why? Why we're in public meeting? You got any suggestions, Mark? <laughs> uh, uh, no, I did. Well, I wasn't sure exactly what you were looking. You know, I mean, I knew we were down. I knew right. we needed somebody, but right. No, we will look. Well, I'd like to replace my staff member that has transferred departments and yep. add an additional, so I can pair two together. Makes good sense. And keep them moving on different projects because there's a lot of buildings and facilities in Walker County. Uh, any other questions? No, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can pull that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Christy Anderson, probate judge. This is Shannon Aders, my chief clerk, and we're here um, with the probate court for our budget. Um, so, um, the only thing that I know that we've really changed that I guess.
guess I would explain a little would be the salary part. Um, with our flow, I'm hoping when um, next year it gets better, if we if they do pass the e-filing, that it will be a little less on us. I don't know. Um, but my the, the salary part there is including, um, of course, Judy, Pat, and Shannon that we have now. Um, my part-time just started last week, so I'm a part-time person and adding a full-time person is um, what we would have right there. So everything else is kind of the same. I didn't change a lot because we just got notification that our um, fees for class, just like I'm sure that y'all would have to go to, they're going up again, as usual. Um, so it was in there. And then on the attorneys, I left um, the court point attorney, so I have one that has not turned in their um, invoice yet. And that's also, um, we are having a lot, a, a huge amount of guardianships um, that are being filed. And we have to appoint an attorney for them and a guardian ad at most times. Um, most of the time the people pay, but there's many times that we don't. And then I left that one also in there. Um, and Mr. Gottlieb can explain more with me on this one, but for when we have people, we get bills from um, like, DeKalb County, places like that, that have, um, we may not have sent, I may not have sent them on an OTA, an order to apprehend where they've gone for mental evaluation. But if they're in a, somewhere to a hospital, whatever, and they're sent, and they have to see our people, as long as they're a resident here, we have to pay for that. So I think I've got a bill right now up from DeKalb County, it's 800 and something dollars. I'm disputing it because I'm thinking, no, you gotta show me what you did for that amount. But we never know when they come in. Um, you know, and if it's a citizen of our county, we have, it's by law, we have to pay it. Um, the code says that I don't necessarily have to have a line item budget for that, but I like to have one for that so that we know it's allotted for there because they're going to get more and more of them. We're seeing those more and more um, on that part. So, do you have any questions for me? Let's jump back to your personnel costs. I wouldn't follow any there. You say you've hired one part-time person that's on staff now. Yes, sir. That was in my budget from last time, and we just hadn't, because they didn't have the room for them. We don't have the space, but we, <laughs> whether they have to sit on the floor, we got to have somebody to help, um, you know, with the phone. The intake has yeah. just completely gone up and up and up for deaths and guardianships, yes. marriages and gun permits, so we have to have someone to help us out the window at least. And then you're wanting to hire another full-time person. Full-time, yes. Judy is going to 32 hours um, now. She said had 55 years in, so I finally talked to her to say, please just take a day <laughs> a week. If you're not going to completely retire, just take a day. Just, you know, go and do stuff. So she's dropping back to 32 hours um, a week. And then my part-time is 24 hours. And then my full-time would go back to another other person full-time. So following up on that, mm -hmm. so you, you've got a thirty thousand dollar increase in your in your salaries. You're saying all that's included in that? Yes, sir. Okay. All of us are included in that three hundred thousand there. That's that's about the thirty. Because with my part time, Judy dropping down, and then hiring my part time, um, my full time, it it's like thirty one seven twenty. My part time is nineteen nine sixty eight. If she works all those. Uh, she's only guaranteed till December yeah. right now um, on that part. And then dropping um, Judy down to 32 hours. And then now, and I think I've got budget room in there to leave it. I, and I'm gonna let you aware of this, and I'm sure y'all are, and Greg could let you know. We called, she, Sheila called, and I tried to find out through my association, but you know, we're based, elected officials are based on the state, whatever the state does. Well, state is giving a 4% increase. So that's on top of our COLAs or whatever that we have on there. They, for the state employees, they capped it at $3,000. So it could be more, you may have got less, but you're getting three no matter what. We talked with ACCG because our calculator is not out. We have a salary calculator that we go by and that they provide. They said that's not gonna be out to the end of June. So, and we don't know, I don't know if, the full 4%, is it 4% of the whole thing? We don't know that. So with us having to have this done by May, the fourth Tuesday in May, that may have to, before you actually adopt it, we may have to go back and look at that. Um, but if it is, it's not much, you know, on that part of it. 
but I think I've got it covered in there, but I don't know um, until I actually calculate that out and see. Okay. Um, is there anything else you see? Um. Well, just a question. So, with the addition of employees or part-time employees, what, wouldn't your wouldn't your insurance and your other lines jump a little bit? I don't figure that. <laughs> I don't know how to figure FICA and all the other stuff. Greg always just plugs that stuff in. I just put the salary. Okay. So that is just salary. So yes, the bottom line is going to increase. I just don't know how to do pension and all that stuff. And I'm sorry, I wish I did, but I, I don't. So, and I'm, I know I'd get it wrong, so I just try to leave that one if, if that's okay. Greg usually fills, fills that in after he plugs those numbers in, or, or maybe you did, Mr. Whitfield. I'm not sorry, I don't want to say who did, but somebody did that calculation for me, and I thank you. Okay. Is that kind of consistent with what we're seeing on some of these others? And, uh, uh, I noticed some have broken that out, you know, yeah. that we've had. Yes. It kind of is consistent across, according to how many people mm -hmm. and what the money's on. Yeah. What they used to tell us is look at it and do like 3% increase on it, but I did that and then sometimes it was more than 3%, so I said, you know what? <laughs> That's not my expertise. I will leave that to you all on there. I'll just give you what the, the salary is and, um, and go that route, which, um, of course, like one of my employees, well, two of them, are not covered with insurance, and then my part-time wouldn't be. So the only other was us two, and then a full-time one, if they got, if they don't have it somewhere else. So that's really hard to for me to know what to put there. Any other questions? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. All right. And what, can, do I, can I ask this here? I don't know if I need to do it here, if I need to do it on the other meetings, or how it is. Um, with that being said, Shannon is my chief clerk. Um, but I need to request what I would love to do. Um, her pay will be what we have in here right now with it. Um, so it won't change my fees, it won't change anything like that. But right now she has agreed, <laughs> if we could, that she would um, come in as my part-time associate judge. Um, when I'm not there, like June the 17th, I think it is. Yes. We have six, seven, we have, I've got seven guardianship hearings. If I had that, she could hold hearings when I'm holding probate hearings and stuff, and that way they're not having to wait. Oh, we can't do this month. Oh, well, is that, she could handle things like that. Um, the, it just says that I do have to get your permission, the governing body's permission to be able to make her my associate. So if that would be something, tell me how I need to do that. Do I need to put it in? Writing, do yeah, I need to definitely would need to put that in writing. Okay. I mean, we'd have to see what the procedures are. I right. had that yeah, come up before. Okay. So we'd have to find out, make sure we follow the statute. Sure, absolutely. And that, that's what I want to on that one and go with it. So if I do, I just submit it to you, or do I have to bring it to the meeting no, or submit it to you? And that, okay, okay, and we'll do that one. Okay, so anything else? Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank, Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. That's well, good. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs> you'll state your name for the record. And Danielle your Montgomery, um, Director of Elections and Registration. And um, I'm sure you all have a copy. Um, I'll just um, go over the things that I've made adjustments to. And I, if I can speak to what you were asking Christy and them about um, adjusting the um, life insurance and, and long term and short term, we I do not touch that because I don't know how to, to do that. Um, so I think it is probably most people that I heard you ask that, uh, Mr. Askew, so um, um, that don't mess with those. So I didn't. Um, I will say there is um, an increase in salary um, because I will, uh, board will be asking for raises um, for staff um, and myself. Um, there is an increase in postage um, and that is um, kind of twofold. We have, um, currently we um, have a, um, a warranty agreement um, for our machines um, that 
warranty does not include shipment of those machines. Um, so we have upped that, that postage to include um, shipment of machines that will be uh, needing repair. And um, if we uh, also um, move to the Rossville location, um, the new gymnasium for our uh, voting, um, we'll have to send precinct cards out to over 5,000 people. Um, so that's uh, postage stamp is, I mean, uh, postcard stamp is, I want to say 53 cents these days. So um, that, that's quite an expense. So there was an addition of almost $6,000 um, in the postage. Um, there may be an increase in the cellular data. Um, I don't know if you all are aware, but our poll pads, which are our electronic um, uh, election where you check in basically um, and it's a, a, an electronic electors list and they connect to cellular data so when they're um, at the precinct I can see in real time um, who's voted how many they voted how many they're checking in how long it's taken in to check in um, all of that and it is um, something that the state has required us to have so all of our pulp has our cellular data we have to pay for that data and it's like $37 and some change um, per election, per location. So um, with early voting, five locations, and then the 11 election day um, locations. Um, what else was there? Um, there was in, uh, in what line is it? Y'all have to bear with me. I don't know where to put stuff sometimes um, in the budget, so it may not be in a line where it maybe should be, um, but it's under capital equipment, um, or capital equipment, office equipment, I think. Um, well, they both say other, but um, $16,000. So the state has went to um, a new voter registration system um, and we previously had some scanners where we could scan um, documents into people's record, and those are no longer um, compatible with their new system. So we'll need new scanners um, for uh, all four desks, um, for the four that are uh, in the office. Um, I don't think there's anything other than those things where we've made any um, additions. Do you have any detail of what type of scanner you need? Um, the, the state recommended one or two, or maybe two or three. Um, one is a Fuji, blah, 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 I don't know what the numbers are or whatever, um, um, but I can get you those specs um, if you need them. So you need four of them? Yeah, one, one for each desk. And it's um, where we can now, if we're sending a letter to the voter, if we're getting information from the voter, um, if their precinct card comes back, if their um, you know, if we've sent them a confirmation card and it comes back, we can scan that into their record. And so we have that um, logged as, you know, things that we have sent them or correspondence with them. Um, and Did it's you helpful look to have. Do closely at any of the pricing? Because I know scanners have continued to drop. Yeah, the um, I, I haven't. I mean, just I looked at the, I think there was two that the state recommended, and um, they were comparable in price, I think. And um, one was just the Fuji whatever the number is. Uh, but we can look into it um, further and I can uh, maybe check with some counties and see what they're possibly using. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I got one question. So sure. <clears throat> on election day, you got all these people that come work at the polls. You yeah. pay them, I mean, they're obviously not full-time employees. Oh yeah, yeah, I have that budget as it's well, a yeah. It's a little separate budget you'll have yeah. in a second. Oh, so it's not included in the top. Yeah, right, so it's, it's a separate. Yeah, it is. It's a separate yeah. budget. So there's an election budget. And I haven't. Budget. I don't. I don't. I, I may have increased it slightly. There may be. Yeah, there may be an increase in it slightly. I don't remember. Ooh, I have to look. Um, but just because we'll be using more poll workers come November um, than than we have been using for these first two elections that we've had so far. Okay. Back on your capital, you mentioned the uh, scanners, and the, you've got another 15000 in here. For you know, I just kind of, I don't know if I um, up that or if that was what it was already. And I honestly, I don't know what that $9,000 is because it says what we've, you know, currently requested or what we've, we've used already. It, 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 okay, we'll check into that. Yeah, because um, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know what section they put stuff in when we send it over there. 
And um, there's also um, the very last line item on one of my pages is the purchase contractual services reimbursement. And there's nothing in there. And we have had reimbursement. Um, so I don't know why that isn't showing. It should be for your city reimbursement. Right. And it should, I don't know where we get um, so qualifying. Coming to you? They come to me and then I send them to you all. Or, or you know the commissioner's office, the governing authority, um, and we've also we've also had some um, mm, thousands of dollars in um, qualifying fee money that came from um, us qualifying the nonpartisan and half from the Dem uh, the Republican Party um, that that isn't showing anywhere either. Well, I know on the reimbursements when you get those reimbursements from the cities for holding their elections. Mm -hmm. You need to code it to that GL number right there before you send it over. Okay. And that way it'll show up as a credit okay. on there. Very good. Does that go to the general fund? It, it does, but it should credit back against this their budget since it's their personnel cost. Yeah. Well, we can look and see where that's being credited now. Okay, good. Any, any other questions for Danielle? No, sir. I'm good. Thanks. Right. Thank y'all. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate you, you coming by. Yeah, no, appreciate y'all. We're running a little ahead of schedule, so Sheriff Wilson is here with us, and he's going to start us off in our 1 o'clock hour. So, Sheriff, go right ahead. Okay. It's nothing like uh, presenting to a board that's got a full belly, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got you right after lunch. <laughs> so that should make everything go really smooth. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll go over just a little bit here. Uh, the sheriff's office is broken down into several subtitles, everything from administration to patrol to jail uh, to court services, uh, office and buildings, special ops. And so I guess I'll just, I'll go in the order that uh, the budget starts and hopefully that'll give you a, a little bit uh, overview there for if you're not really familiar with how, it, how it's laid out. And we've been doing this for a number of years this way. Uh, in the old days, it was uh, pretty much uh, patrol or uh, enforcement and jail. And then with this newer worksheet, we broke it down even further. So the first uh, 3310 is law enforcement and administration. And uh, we have, this uh, includes salaries for admin, uh, everything that's under that umbrella of administration. Plus, a lot of our big items are under admin too, uh, such as uh, repairs to the vehicles uh, and stuff like that that may be uh, it's, uh, kind of a big lump sum. We've been doing it this way for a number of years uh, to kind of keep a better uh, idea of what we're spending. So with law enforcement administration, uh, you see there, and with all these, uh, divisions here you're going to see as usual as i know you, you understand that uh, the biggest increases uh, each and every year is going to be salaries and benefits and uh, health insurance and uh, fica you name it uh, those are all your big ticket items is those salaries so if you take all the salaries out of this whole equation here you're not looking at a lot of a big increase except in two or three items that i'll try to highlight but law enforcement administration, uh, we're looking at an increase there of 34,890 uh, in the uh, in the employee services and benefits. Then when we drop on down to uh, personal services and in, uh, employee benefits, uh, just a small increase there under uh, maintenance contracts. Uh, drop down a little bit further there to repair vehicles. That's the, one of the bigger increases uh, that I'm asking for because we've seen such a, a large increase in uh, the repair of vehicles. That's uh, right at 120,000 this year, and it looks like we're trending to go over that uh, uh, by a good bit. Um, and uh, we're asking for 159,000 uh, from 120 to 159. And a lot of that may be uh, attributed to uh, accidents with deer. Uh, so this is taking into account, uh, you know, accidents with vehicles, also the maintenance of vehicles. Uh, but as we've discussed this previously, our deductible 
on the uh, automobile insurance was raised uh, to save us money on the auto premium, but it doesn't cover a lot of these smaller accidents, so we're having to take those repairs out of that repair budget. So it's it's pushed up, uh, pushed that cost way up and going over this year. So we think that uh, that current figure there, the request is, is more accurate as to what we're going to see. Uh, and so you get to the bottom of law enforcement admin and it's about an increase. Uh, and I will look at on the last page there, or at least it's my last page, uh, all the gasoline and fuel is lumped into admin and that's for the entire sheriff's office, again, where we can track it a little bit better. I've left that at the same as it was last year. Uh, I'm certainly open to any suggestions if you think. Uh, gasoline fuel is always kind of just a, we don't know what it's gonna be. I mean, we don't know today what it'll be three months from now or six months or a year from now. Um, it looks like right now we're running about budget we're staying within the budget on the gasoline and fuel so i left that i didn't increase that at all um, but that's just because it's staying about the same um, you know i may have to come back in six months and say oh my goodness gas is shot up to four dollars a gallon we're going to have to do something but uh, i left it the same uh and that under admin that results in about a hundred twenty nine thousand dollar budget increase <clears throat> going over to the next uh, division is criminal investigations uh, and that's uh, in personnel asking for a $52,000 increase uh, come on down to the health insurance I'm asking for about $11,000 increase in insurance and that's based on uh, what our current budget is trending now, I don't know if you have any figures yet on what health insurance will cost us next year, but I plugged in about $11,000 increase there because I, I didn't know, if, most every year insurance goes up. Uh, I defined benefit uh, uh, down in, in uh, down a little bit further there, I increased it 10,000 because it looked like it was trending a little higher this year. Uh, <clears throat> And that, that uh, results in a 98,437 budget increase. On over device control, um, asking for uh, 23,500 additional in salaries there to uh, add additional person to the uh, drug task force. Uh, currently I have budgeted a clerical position there, but that position is no longer there. And I'd like to take that clerical position, add 23.5 to it, and add one extra personnel to help with drug enforcement. And that results in about a $34,000 increase in vice control. Next up is uniform patrol. Uh, salary and benefits there uh, request is 113.4. Health insurance, I increased it $20,000 for a total of $225,142. Actually, $226,942 for that patrol division. Uh, jail operations, uh, personnel, uh, salary and wages. Uh, $99,720 request increase. Uh, dental services, uh, I increased that $4,000 because that was trending high. Uh, inmate medical, uh, it looks like we're, I think we're okay with the 315, 315,000 that we got budgeted there. Uh, so I left that alone, I did not increase that. Uh, an area I did need to increase in is uh, medical prescriptions. Uh, we were going over medical prescriptions every month. Uh, we currently had a budget of 213000 and we're trending on up to 290, 295. So I 
increase that medical prescription budget from 213 to 299 to help cover that cost in medical prescriptions. Uh, food, uh, food for the jail, for the inmates. Uh, I got a quote this week that it was going up 4.1% in October. So I increased that 15,000 from seven, from 370 to 385. And that's a 4.1% increase. Uh, we've been fortunate that our population has been down over the last four months. Uh, which is a good thing. It's always a good thing when you got less people in jail. So it's it's kept our food cost uh, below budget. Now we could next year get into a period where we're over over in uh, inmate headcount, and uh, 385 may not be enough. But at this point, I just increased it to 4.1 percent to cover that cost increase on October 1st. That results in the jail operations increase request of 247,939. Uh, CHAMPS program, uh, not a lot of change there. Uh, the salary of regular employees increased 20,000. Uh, I think the, uh, we increased uh, the, the Social Security, uh, health insurance, and defined benefit, and all, that all came to a $48,000 increase. Uh, training budget uh, was a 15000 increase, but that's mostly just salary and benefits there. Uh, the SWAT team, or S, uh, Special Operations Group, uh, increased $2,500. We tried to keep that just about where it was last year. Uh, the building, uh, the sheriff's office building for minor repairs, paint, those type of things increased $8,000 increase is all we asked for, their, for that. And that takes care of all those minor issues that you have from day to day uh, throughout the building, the big building. Does not include roof repairs. Uh, court services, uh, this is the court division, uh, court security, transport, service of papers, warrants. Uh, that's a $71,000 request. Uh, let's see, and that results in about a $142,000. Uh, well, the health the health insurance expense went up 15000 in that division. Uh, a lot of those, it's an older division. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, for a total of 144565 request increase. Uh, the bailiff uh, increase was less than $1,000 at $955. That's kind of an overview there of each division and each budget request. If you go back to page two under law enforcement administration on this printout here, the second line item is general supplies, material, and ammo expense. Mm -hmm. Current budget is 24000 plugged in 37000 Uh, Yeah, that we've always kept a... Uh, we looked at one time putting that in training, and we, uh, for some reason, we've always had uh, ammo expense in admin and an ammo expense in training. But really, they both probably need to be under training and have one line out of it. It's just always been this way. Uh, let me go back and look here. Training, you've got $32,000 there, yeah. you have a $34,000 ask. And it does, it does take both of those line items. It's just that they've always been separate. Um, There's no one, page two going from 24,000 yeah, to 37,000. Yeah, let me, let me see, let me see if I can answer that for you. Well, 
I don't have anything on my notes here as to why that. Uh, I'm trying to. Do you have on yours uh, what it uh, maybe what its year to date is? No, I don't have it on mine. No, I don't have it on this uh, worksheet I'm at here now. Uh, I probably took a year to date uh, what I was looking at year to date and uh, took it on out. I just don't have that on my notes. We can look at that one. Yeah. Okay, any other questions from, from the board? We're looking at about a million dollar increase total here. About 950. Any questions? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, thank you. All Very right, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, our landfill operations, uh, Payne Gilly. Okay, sure. And we've got 15 minutes. Okay. one way to keep on the time. Seven. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Payne Gilly. I'm the manager of the Walker County Landfill Facility. And uh, I think in order to go forward, we have to know where we are and where we've come. So I put together a, just a, a quick description of the landfill and some of the services in our facility so that we can understand where our money goes and where it comes from. Is that better? Okay. Uh, so the Walker County is situated in the Valley and Ridge Physiographic Province of the Appalachian Highlands of Northwest Georgia. And uh, the landfill is located in the northern portion of Walker County and, and within Ch Chattanooga Valley. Uh, the resulting topography consists of steeply dipping rock formations that form ridges with broad and relatively flat valleys between them. The ridges are composed of hard, weather-resistant sedimentary rocks whereas the valleys are composed of softer sedimentary rocks that are susceptible to erosion. The valleys typically have creeks or streams that flow through them, trending primarily northeast and parallel to the ridges. Uh, the Walker County landfill is permitted through the Georgia Department of Natural Resources Environmental Protection Division Land Protection Branch, also known as the EPD and the Walker County landfill is permitted to accept waste from seven counties. So that includes Floyd, Chattooga, Dade, Gordon, Whitfield, Catoosa, Hamilton, and of course Walker County. <clears throat> now, getting back to the physiographic province, <clears throat> that's important because that puts us in what the state has determined to be an area of high pollution susceptibility. The, the ground, the, the, the bedrock out there and the, the soils um, give great access to our aquifers that are beneath Walker County and those are very precious to us. So since we're within the Chattanooga Valley, Chattanooga Valley is an area with bedrock to be er erodible and subject to karst and karst topography is formed by the dissolution of carbon and rocks over time. So these, these rock formations basically melt away due to the pH of water running through them and that creates solution channels, caves, caverns, things like that. And that also allows pollution, if it gets into those areas, to kind of migrate into downward into some of our aquifers. So being in the, in the, groundwater, pollution the groundwater pollution susceptibility map of Georgia, in any case, since we're in an area of higher pollution susceptibility, <clears throat> that, raises, that raises our cleanup standards, our cleanup levels, our monitoring requirements, and that sort of thing. It's very, so, and that relates back to the landfill as, a, as additional cost. Um, Figure four of this handout shows basically the layout. Uh, the site consists of two sites. Walker County Landfill consists of two sites with various waste handling operations taking place at each respect, respective site. Site one is located on approximately 84 acres. It contains one closed municipal solid waste landfill, 
one transfer station, municipal solid waste transfer station, one discarded tire storage sorting area, one metal recycling receptacle, one waste oil rec recycling tank, one cardboard paper plastic recycling receptacle, one scale house, one administrative building and shop. Site two consists of one 34 acre construction and demolition landfill with a 22 and one half acre permitted expansion. That was permitted, uh, that was approved two years ago through the EPD. So getting back to pollution susceptibility, there are 24 groundwater monitoring wells sampled twice a year biannually and 14 methane gas monitoring wells or stations sampled every three months on a quarterly basis during the year. At site two, we have nine groundwater monitoring wells and 10 methane gas monitoring wells. And those, um, again, those are sampled biannually. At site one and site two are sampled at the same time. And the methane gas uh, monitoring is done at the same time. And then finally, we have four off-site stormwater discharge locations that are sampled biannually. Um, if you look at the trend <coughs> moving through the handout, um, there is, we see that our, our volume is up. We've kind of come out of the, I guess we call the, the winter doldrums, and we're starting to see a rise in our, in our, in our volume, but we're still not quite where we, where we need to be. Um, and that affects our revenue. Our, our revenue streams uh, are basically the municipal solid waste that comes in that includes mattresses and box springs, construction and demolition material taken at the transfer station and the C&D site, the C&D landfill, uh, brush trees stump disposal, mulch sales. <coughs> we get revenue through recycling with metal, batteries, and white goods. Those are uh, items with a refrigerant system. Uh, scrap tires, we charge a fee for scrap tires based on size and ton, tonnage. Um, metal rims, tires on, on rims or wheels, and animal remains. So if we look at an expense summary off of those revenue streams, at the MSW <coughs> transfer station, we have the operations, that's typically two operators, fuel, utilities, de depreciation schedule, maintenance, equipment repairs, and waste transportation and disposal to the main landfill, uh, regional landfill operated by Republic Services in Collinsville, Alabama. That's just south of Fort Payne. Under our construction and demolition um, site, uh, we also have C&D going to the transfer station, but at the landfill we have operations. It's usually one to two operators. Uh, there's depreciation on that. The maintenance and regulatory maintenance, since that's an active facility, we have to maintain that in com and remain in compliance. That's additional cost. Equipment repairs, and then we have to cover the waste that we deposit out there within 30 days of depositing it. Um, under the brush, trees, and stump disposal area, um, we have operations. That's typically one operator. There we have operations costs, fuel equipment repairs, um, and then we also have annual grinding. That's where a contractor comes in, grinds up our year's worth of trees and stumps and, and, and logs, things like that. And we stock to pile that stuff, and as part of our recycling program, we sell that to a facility in Stevenson, Alabama. Um, then uh, under metal recycling, we have batteries, white goods, refrigerant systems. The trans there's transportation involved in that. Uh, we, have a, we have a large container box that we fill, um, and then we contract a firm to transport that to the local recycling facility. And then the um, expenses for our scrap tires are basically scrap tire pile maintenance, and then transportation and disposal to the facility in Alabama. Um, we also have uh, financial assurance for those sites. That's basically when you, when you own or operate a landfill, the state wants to make sure that when you close it, that it's going to be maintained for a certain period of time, especially if there's any contamination at the site. And that's, uh, that's a 30-year period. So we have to account for yearly, um, yearly costs, which is written in as an expense, to cover that maintenance for 30 years. Uh, we also have facility equipment uh, depreciation um, at the site. And um, 
with our recycling program, we have disposal of transportation costs. Like to operate our, our cardboard, paper, plastic um, recycling program, we pay an outside firm, even though we don't charge for that, we pay an outside firm to come pick up that material and haul it off and, and dispose of, of that, uh, that waste. So that kind of gives you an idea of who and what we are and where some of our expenses go. Um, if we want to look at the budget. Okay, so we're based on revenue. You know, how many tons do we get a year times our disposal rate? You know, that's what we basically have to operate. We're a government enterprise, so we want to try to pay, pay for ourselves. Um, you know, we're trying to make projections here with still another quarter to go. So we did the best we can. And we're looking at about an increase of 14%. And the landfill is divided into those different revenue areas that I talked about. As far as our solid waste and recycling goes, um, we've put all of our uh, employee costs in there. It's, it's up some. We did add, we did add um, a spot for an additional laborer, so that drove the price up a little bit. Um, as far as the um, professional engineering fees, uh, we're going to have to replace about five groundwater monitoring wells at the site this year. That's going to increase the professional services, the technical services. Um, we can do some of that stuff in-house some of the monitoring, some of the reporting, that type of thing. We try to help out wherever we can, but for the most part, this is where a big chunk of, of the, uh, the increases have come. Um, a lot of this has, has remained the same. Um, moving through, let's see. You know, at the transfer station, um, we have more technical services. Big portion of this of this budget, as well as is the repair cost for our equipment. You know, the, the equipment's getting older, so that's going to be more breakdowns. It's going to be it's going to mean more repairs, parts, service time, service calls to some of the specialty firms that maintain this type of heavy equipment. And that all that all that has all increased our, our budget. Uh, let's see. Under the C and D, there's not really that much because right now we're trying to save our airspace. So we're putting enough up there just to just to keep the skids greased and keep the permit active. But there's still some maintaining to do. We're getting ready to start a large uh, slope project um, over the next couple of months. That's going to um, so. And some of these things are are out of our control. EPD may come down and say, well, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. And we have to suddenly factor that into our budget. So there's a little bit in there for that. And then, then at the very end, you see the post closure costs. A lot of that is back into the general budget, though, isn't it, Shannon? There's, there's yeah. 60, yeah, so that's, uh, that's carried by the general fund. How are we doing on time? Okay. Y'all have any questions? Yes. So far. Yes, sir. So you said you had to replace five of the groundwater monitoring wells. Is that so correct? about 400 feet of drilling. So what, are you adding wells or are you having to replace them? Having to replace them. Uh, there's a EPD rule that if they're dry more than two monitoring events in a row, they need to be replaced. Okay. And we've been lucky. You know, um, and they haven't really said anything about it, but the last event, they were dry, so we feel like they're going come, come to come to us this year and say they need to be replaced. And I, I got a price that's uh, anywhere from 80 to to $100 a foot to drill, just to drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> $80 in a foot? Yeah, back in 2016 when we when we drilled the wells for the expansion, that was a 50 a foot. Yeah. Because okay. the, the drilling out there is very difficult. Um, it's some of the toughest that I've seen. I've drilled in 15 different states, okay? So some of this rock out there, it's got a lot of chert in it, and that just eats those bits up. 
it just it just wears them down. A bit that would normally get a downhole hammer that would normally get four or five thousand feet, we were getting eight hundred feet at the landfill. It just chews through it, and it's just expensive. And when you're setting a, a two-inch well, a lot of times you have to double case the hole to keep it from falling in. Mm -hmm. If you if you hit a cavern, you got to seal that cavern off, or a solution channel, you got to seal that off. It's just it's complicated. Yeah. Okay. So, Payne, you're showing about a four hundred thousand dollar increase in revenue. How do you get there? Well, looking at um, a, a lot of the things stayed the same. We we increased things that we felt like we that were unpredictable, like fuel. Um, uh, we looked at what we've paid this year and the previous four years. But kind on the of revenue side, out. how are you going to get four hundred thousand dollars of new revenue? Well, we're going to have to raise. We're going to have to raise rates. We uh, we've already gotten our notice from a public that has told us that they're going up effective July 1st. And in order to match that, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to raise rates as well. And that incl also includes rates for um, mattresses, uh, refriger refrigerators, um, <clears throat> brush. You know, all the re revenue streams are all going to have to be increased. So on the MSW waste coming in, have you got a number projected yet of what that needs to be per ton increase? Yeah, I, I, I did, yes. Uh, uh, around 56.50. What are we now? 49. So you're looking at about a $7.5 and a half increase? They're going up 6%. They're going from um, 30.84 to 32.48. That includes, that includes the Alabama fee as well. There's a Alabama charges a dollar fee for every ton that comes into their state. But that's not going to raise $400,000. That's just going to recoup the cost we're paying to them, correct? Well, we're hoping that our volume will come back up. I mean, there is, there is, there is a lot of ifs, ands, or buts about this. <laughs> and we'll, we'll know more as we work towards October and we get you know, we just got in May's data. Um, the tonnage was up. So hopefully in June, July, August, you know, as we're working towards September, we'll be able to nail this down a little bit better. But right now we're having to project out, what, four months? Okay. Any other questions for the thing? I just, well, like you said, Brian, was a good, good point about bringing up that the, uh, revenue. A, a big, a couple, see some of these bigger customers. I mean, if we we landed a couple of bigger customers, that could that could bring that up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's usually a few projects that sort of come in unexpectedly. Right. You know, last year we had a real good uh, Wright Brothers brought in a real good right. job for us. So we're, you know, there's always that to factor in. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for Pay? No, sir. Right, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Pay. You're welcome. Okay, next we have is Miss Jenna Stevens with our Mountain Co Farms operations. I appreciate Miss Jenna coming in early. We're still running about 30 minutes ahead of schedule. Jenna Stevens with Mountain Cove Farms, and um, I just want to talk about, let's see here for a second. I want to thank y'all for the opportunity to come today. Um, Mountain Cove Farms to me is a wonderful asset for Walker County. There's endless potential there. However, I feel like we have a lot of missed potential. Um, we have a very great, dedicated staff. There's only three of us. Um, we've taken huge cuts to spending over the years. Ultimately, um, our goal was from going from a really big loss to breaking even, which we haven't quite made it there yet, but at some point we will. Um, we don't spend a lot of money. Most of our budget is with payroll and the utilities on the 13 buildings on the property. Um, 
In your packet, I have, just to kind of give you a visual aid, I'm not sure the last time you'll have to put your eyes on the property, but it shows you pictures of the current conditions of our facilities, um, which need great improvement. We have, if you look there on the cabins, I've listed as far as things that we need and then the repairs that we need. Um, and you can see the look of the outside of the cabins. And that's what we're currently renting out to people. Um, so we have asked for some money as far as our building repairs go. Um, after talking with Shannon earlier, he did tell me one of the things listed is that we need new gutters. We did get new roofs over the last three years to different buildings, but that those the gutters have been paid for, they just need to be installed. Um, <clears throat> then just the basic needs of replacing linens and things of that nature. But to show you as well the pricing, how much more we could charge if our facilities were just up to par. Um, and these are the doors that people are walking up to as they're staying at the cove. There, whenever you first walk up to our cabins, we actually are at a point to where with, we either need some help there or I don't know that we would need to, we're gonna get a lot more violations um, based on the conditions of the buildings. And so, with that, we have made a lot of growth. Um, we would like to replace the position that was from 2021 when our part-time help left. We haven't added that back, but we would like to. Um, and that's where we requested $5,000 towards the salary and wages. For the building repairs, we asked for an additional $12,000. And we know that you can't do all this at once, but if we could just get some paint and things started there. Um, and then also, we now have the option for fiber. Um, in the past, the Cove, we were paying $10,000 a month at one point for internet service. That was back when we first opened. Um, so we cut that back tremendously to just the one hot spot at our little office area there. So we would like to add the $6,800 for the fiber. And what that would do is, of course, include an amenity, but it's going to also, it's a safety issue. A lot of people don't get cell phone service where we are. Um, so there's not, if there was an emergency, there's no way for them to call out. Um, and then as far as... Just general supplies, we would like to be able to replace a lot of the furniture is the original furnishings um, and then linens as well. So if we could just add the $5,500 under supplies. And then I've also included on the back here a sheet that shows you what we're currently charging a knot versus if we had the improved facilities, what we could have, which is currently 287,500, and that's roughly for just a fourth of the year worth of rentals. Um, and if our buildings were improved and we could take our prices up, then that would be On the left side, it's just some extra information as well on potential growth and things that we've looked at. But until our buildings get in better shape, we can't go forward with that. And I've also included a history there on the cove, um, talking about when the buildings were built, what they were built for, how they were built, that kind of thing.
Anybody have any questions for Jen? Any questions for Jen? No, sir. I appreciate all the information. Yeah, thank you. Very, 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 very informative. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, our fleet maintenance brick car. Start out here with the uh, salary and wages increase of thirty-five thousand, just the cost of living, and and replace uh, one or two people that, I, that I'm missing out on. Uh, the next item is health insurance, uh, eight thousand increase on it, and short-term disability, uh, one thousand increase on it, and social security, a two thousand two two thousand two hundred increase on that. Medicare General, a 525 increase on that. Workers' compensation, an $800 increase on that. Employee benefit, identify, identify that protection, a 100 increase on that. A technical contractual service, a 2,000 increase on that. Is the new diagnostic tools and stuff, we have an annual contract with, with those. And on the uh, repairs and maintenance supply, a $50,000 increase on that. And the repairs reimbursement general budget, a $100,000 increase on that. And then travel general, a $3,000 increase on that for guys going out of, tra out of town on training and stuff. We got a couple of guys wanting to do some schooling. And that's it for me. Any questions? Well, I got a question, Rick. So, so how are you on personnel out there now? I know at one time you were kind of short some people. Are you fully staffed now? No, we're still down a fabricator, mechanic slash fabricator. We're still down on one of the, on one of those guys. We really need a fabricator. We've got some guys that do some small welding, but most of the time we're having the big jobs. We're having to contract out. I appreciate this opportunity of coming to present in person. Um, this is nice. Um, in front of you, you'll see uh, that I have our official request letter. I um, also have the FY25 operating budgets for all three of our libraries on one page. That's the long sheet. And then I've also included a copy of our most recent full year, year in review. Uh, it's kind of our statistics for the year, but we like to um, not just show you a bunch of numbers, but to actually put it into the form of impact stories to show how our services um, affect our community. So you've got all three of those in front of you. Um, but I would like to direct you to the budget page. Um, our revenue section, what, we, what I've done for this budget is I have left everything in there as what we received last year. As you know, we have six funding agencies across the three libraries. You guys are one of them. And we have three different fiscal years, so it's really hard. Our, our budget cycle starts July 1st, but we have not heard from all of our funding agencies. We don't know what they'll be giving us, so we always start our year with what did we receive last year. So you're looking at what we received from all of our funding agencies last year. Um, and we have um, the expense section is based on our, March, our actuals as of March 31st. So the two areas where we've projected the highest increase in our need and expenses, of course, are in our wages and our benefits. So if you take a quick look at the bottom of the page on the right, you'll see that we're looking at an FY25 budget deficit of $54,289. Now, we are not asking you guys for that full amount. Like I said, we have six funding agencies. Well, we'll be asking all of our funding agencies for an increase, but we are asking you all for a $36,000 increase for our three libraries in Walker County. Um, because benefits and wages is that biggest increase, we do try to minimize the effect. Last year in our 
request letter to you, I think I mentioned that a mandated increase in health insurance by the state. We do, we are on the same health insurance um, program as the teachers are in Georgia and the teacher retirement system. And they informed us last year that we would be experiencing an increase in health insurance, the employer share over the next four years. It would go, it's about a 30% increase, 20 to 30%. Um, it started out at 10,000 a person per year and it will go up to 18,000 per person per year in FY27. So each year we're asking for just a little bit to help us to combat that increase. We do try to minimize that by only having two folks in our libraries in a benefit status. So if you're at 30 hours, you qualify for health insurance. Our Lafette branch has, has three because they're our busiest branch. Um, but if you um, work 20 hours or more, you qualify for teacher retirement. So as you see, we try to keep as few um, full-time employees, but it gets really hard to run libraries with very part-time people, but we're doing it because we realize these mandated increases are hard to absorb when they hit like the way they do. So you have everything in front of you, and I'm here to answer any questions if you have any questions about our increase request. Any questions? No, sir. No. Thank you. Well, thank you for your support all these years. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, now we're back to Mr. Carlin. My, my mistake. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Carlin. This is different from the one we have. Carl Bowers, Walt County Public Works. Um, so, if you look at the budget worksheet that I just handed out, everything in the 5100s is pretty, uh, salary, uh, payroll, health, and all of that. I've added about four to five percent to those numbers, and I've put 260,000 in for at least five more employees. That is a rough number of uh, $40,000 a person on salary, and then it costs the county about $12,000 a person to hire. I believe that's about right, isn't it? Um, so the 5200s, that's um, different things. that I've added about 30% to all of that uh, with rock, pot, just materials in general has gone up about 30% over the last couple of years. Um, that's just where we're at with things. Flip over to the next page. Uh, general supplies, materials, shop supplies, just it, it, the, everything there is just something we use to repair something on the road. It's all gone up. The one question I had for you guys actually is uh, the general uh, snow and ice removal. It's been fifteen thousand for years. I can pretty much get by on fifteen thousand, but we've got some equipment that we've got to buy, and it's going to cost about sixty thousand. So I need to do that. I need sixty thousand in that line, or it's in capital overlays. However, we need to. But I'll ex when I get down to that, I'll explain it. Um, I mean, I'm not, unless you guys want me to go line by line on every one of this, it's pretty much self-explanatory there. On the capital outlays, most of this we typically do with SPLOS, SPLOS dollars on um, like box culverts, bridge repairs, things like that. Wasn't exactly sure where to put this. I went ahead and done it in here, but we it can be taken out. Um, the our SPLOS money is all earmarked earmarked for paving, so that's plain and simple. We average around four hundred fifty thousand dollars a month on that, so it's that that's all for asphalt. Um, SPLOS 
that's T splice. Splice is a little diff different. Um, so there he is. 3.4 million in capital overlays for I know a couple of bridges that we've got issues with currently. I've got about five uh, box culverts that we need to do. Um, just wag numbers, what little bit of information I've been able to pull. It's about $800 a foot on, on the concrete precast box culverts. Um, Vehicles, uh, there's 200,000 there for pickups, um, smaller vehicles, stuff like trailers, things like that. Uh, other equipment, general 600,000, that would be for things like dump trucks. Uh, they're about 250 a piece. Uh, other equipment, we're gonna have to look into what we're gonna do with the front end loader here pretty soon. It, we've done about all we can do with it. It's, we'll have to discuss that at some point pretty, pretty quick. So if you go down to the bottom part, that's, um, that is a 6.5, dollars $6, budget with outlays. If you take the outlays out, then that's a 3.127919 which is an increase of 543,174. Um, so it, that, that's, that's where I'm at. With, with this budget, without capital outlays, then I maintain it. But it's gonna be really hard to repair things, rebuild things, and, and deal with some of these infrastructure issues that we're having right now. These last two storms have put two box culverts pretty much out. I just, I mean that that's those just happened. I ain't even got into the to the measuring and talking with anybody on those yet. Um, they're probably going to be about three hundred thousand dollars a piece. Be my guess. Any questions? Lofton Lane. Lane. I've got a meeting tomorrow with CTI and CTI tomorrow at 10 and we're going to talk about what Options. yeah what we can and can't do um, shooting from the hip I've had a couple of folks come out with bridge in the bridge world building and stuff they can come up with a repair on it they're saying it's going to be about 400 to get started but without engineered drawings on the repair we don't know what that what GDOT's going to do with that load rating. So it's better to go ahead and have the, have a drone, an engineered repair, that way it was not going to mess with our load ratings from GDOT when they come out to look at it. Um, these other box culverts are, I mean, that, some of them are double barrel pipe. That's been proven not to work. They get washed out, they flood. These box culverts that we've put in in the last couple of years, they are a little bit more expensive, but when they're there, they're there, and we're done for a long time. And what's the biggest difference in the barrel type versus the one putting it out the so wing box? The yeah. pipe, when you're laying pipe in, and if it's depending on size, really, some of these areas that we're putting box culverts in instead of pipe have had pipe. So first off, they're a little undersized and anything that comes down through there, they'll get caught in the middle of the two pipe. Some of these are triple, and it just makes four blockages and, and water gets backed up. As where the box culverts, they're big enough and wide enough to let just let material go. So, um, anything else? I'll do that, go ahead. The, uh, the uh, $60,000, question mark under snow and ice. Yes. What, what is it? I'm going to have to put plows and sanders on our new trucks, on the three trucks. We've looked into all of that kind of stuff and they, we've had, we're having trouble mounting what we have on. So we're going to have to spend about three weeks with a fellow up north 
um, back and forth on the phone. He's gone. He's tried to find me different things to make this stuff work. Um, some of it we could do. If if we do it, we're going to cause problems. It's it's just it's not going to work right. Um, some of the fab work, Western don't they don't make the adapters to make our stuff work anymore. It's kind of been just it's old and it's been discontinued. Trucks are different, so the hookups are different. When you're looking at those sanders, now we're going to get try to get away from those independent gas motors on the back of those. I don't think they make hydraulic. Western don't. Somebody probably does, though. I found one company in South Carolina. I've called them about four times, and I just I hadn't got back with them. Because, you know, in my mind, Carlin, just take it back to the farming community. I mean, all you spreader, litter spreader, mm -hmm. that's all hydraulically driven. So, I mean, I can't see that there's any reason. They're all independent motors that run hydraulic right. pumps on the same. Well, that's what I'm yeah. getting at. I mean, it's just a better system than that gas motor that's it'll be a gas it'll be a gas motor or a propane motor on the sanders i don't hadn't been able to find anything that will run pto like our old ones used to yeah most most of these uh companies have gotten away from that for whatever reason i don't know why they just that's what they've told me any other questions for carl yeah, yeah one question on your salary and wages line on the very top mm -hmm. line so you got a 24 percent increase there is that to include your new employees, I'm assuming. Yes, yes, that's uh, about a 260,000 is that wag numbers, that's what I've done it, that, that, that's what I put in for five people. So and that's 24% covers a cost of living raise and yes. adding five people. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, all right, thanks sir. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you for uh, this process and having us today. I've got, uh, we're going to go over 911 and then EMA. Curtis Creekmer's here. If you have any questions that may pertain to some of the contracts or anything we have with 911. So, I'm not sure when, when you, uh, what print offs you have, but um, this has been a, this process has been for, for me with all these departments has been all the way up till yesterday and some this morning. So you may or may not have an update, but I tried to make it in this uh, proposal. I tried to make it as seamless as as possible. So if you if you open your if you open your uh, proposal, you'll see a table of contents that you can you can flip through and quickly reference uh, certain things uh, under under tab. Uh, one, you'll see the I've got a summary page. This is going to be the breakdown of every option, so it's a quick reference for you to look at. You can go down the page. You'll see that in most cases you'll watch the uh, it, the expenses decrease as the options decrease. Um, and we we understand that this is a proposal, and obviously things are likely to get cut. So uh, just just know that we respect that and and. Uh, as we move through this. So you'll, you'll see the summary page, you'll, and then you'll flip to uh, the uh, second tab there, and it's proposal option one. And this is what's going to be in this, the, the data system, the budget system. This is what's going to be in there as far as numbers, is, is the proposal that has the most amount. So, but it's going to go in order so you can follow it pretty easy. So. Um, in uh, 911, we're asking. I, this is this is my term. Phase three of a renovation project. We had uh, the actual con where the consoles are, the dispatch room. We had it uh, calling it phase one. We had it updated in 2020, and then we had the uh, uh, EOC or conference room updated in 23. And so I'm requesting. Uh, Eighty thousand dollars for capital there to finish the uh, finish the nine one one center uh, inside the outside was renovated as well, um, and then we're and then I'm asking for we're having we have our biggest problem in staffing at with our night shifts 
uh, we've we've uh, I think Curtis and I've we've we've tried uh, and Chairman Whitfield we've sat down and, and tried multiple options. Uh, the latest thing we've done was breaking up some of the hours that's worked, but we're still having we're still having openings at night. So we're proposing a, a two dollar an hour shift differential pay increase to those that work at night to try, try to generate uh, some recruitment retention there. And then built in this is a 5% pay increase um, just due to the simple inflation where we are. Um, and as these proposals go, it, it's going to go 5%, 4%, 3%, 2%, and then budget as is. So uh, if, you, if you flip to proposal two, if you just turn the next tab, you'll see that you'll see on, on number three, it just goes down to 4%. You flip the tab again, you'll see it goes to 3%. And then you'll see under tab five where the $2 shift diff is taken out. In other words, if it was to get cut, this is what the numbers would look like. Um, and then it does the same thing. It falls from 5% as you flip through 4%, 3%, 2%. Uh, and then you're going to see under tab uh, nine that it switches to no pay increase, but it includes the shift diff. So we still got capital, the capital project in on, on all of them. That, that really needs to be com completed. Um, but then it, it goes to that. And under tab 10, um, again, you'll see it's just the cap, it's just the capital, it's just the capital project. That's no increases, no shift diff. And it's going to show you as you as you go to your behind each letter is a breakdown of the budget. If you flip behind the letter, each, each one of these tabs has a breakdown. And it's what's pertinent to this budget. You'll see there's not as many line items because a lot of them are not used. So I summarized it so it'd be easy to follow, um, not get lost in, in what's not there. Um, so um, if you flip to tab 11, it's going to give a breakdown uh, cost estimate of the phase three capital. Um, if we do, if we do some or a little bit or a lot of this in house under our building <coughs> under our building maintenance, this cost would come down. This is just these are num these are numbers if we were to if we were to outsource it. So we could save money uh, looking at like the electrical, you know, the upgraded up upgraded on electrical. Uh, Certain th some things we're not we're not going to probably be able to do, but it gives you an, it gives you an idea of where the thought process is. And then if you flip to tab 12, you'll see I've got a couple of pictures in there of the updated of the of the 911 center. The first one is the communication room where it has been updated. You just pay attention to the carpet, and the lighting, uh, the paint. And then as you flip through, you'll get to the, the kitchen area, which is was, it was a really poor design to begin with. If you'll look to the right in the kitchen, they've got, they, they have to put tables in there to put stuff that should go in cabinets. So um, as we move forward, when we move forward with that upgrade, then um, that, that kitchen needs to, be, needs to be updated. And then it just shows you a picture. You can see the carpet and the, the paint. It's extremely dated uh, in the rest of the building, so we're just looking at trying to finish that up. So if you go back to uh, tab one, when you look at the when you look at the option one, two, and three, and then as you flip the pages, it'll, it'll go again. That that coincides with the tabs, and then you can just look at the number. Um, Revenue-wise, um, this is improving due to the the legislation that passed on cell phones. You know, bringing more money into we've we've seen an increase there, but we're still we're still out of general fund. Always have been on the 911 center. So you can see the revenue is the 911 charges. That's the that's the charges that we receive off of phone services, and then general fund transfer. And then as you go through the options, as they as they marry up with the, each proposal, each tab, you'll see that it decreases. But I put, we put that in there just as a quick, as a quick reference to help you follow through the, flow through the numbers.
questions on 911. Chief, on a, just an average night, how many uh, dispatchers would you have working at night? We have five positions, but we we if you look at our if you look at the budget, the current budget number, you'll see that on um, salary and wages general that we're well under what is in the budget, and that's but we're over on overtime. That's because we keep three people in that room at a minimum, and that's about what we keep staff three to four. Some days it's four, but most days it's three. But we have five positions allotted for that. So um, that's why you'll see there, there's a little bit of a, not as much expense out of salary and wages general in the current budget that you're looking at. Because it's, it's not been full courtesy. We have three or four openings right now, three. That's, that's, honestly, that's pretty good. Any other questions? So you, okay, so the next tab you've got is uh, 13 for EMA. Yes, yeah, so if you'll go to 13, same, same thing applies with the, the summary page. There's only three options in emergency management. It's pretty simple. Um, keep in mind that my salary, um, is it comes in through the public safety fee, goes into the fire department that is transferred to emergency management, and that is, that is because we use that to, to help match that grant we get every year, the MPG grant every year. Um, so if you go to 15, you'll see that um, we, we cut, that we, had a, we, we, we currently have a position in 911 that was operations manager. Um, Curtis and I had gotten together and we'd taken, we'd created that, help together create that position to help with 911 and then help us because we're, we are basically part-time in emergency management. He has IT, which is full-time. I have the fire department and then we have 911 and EMA. So EMA often uh, suffers, if you will, um, with where, in my opinion, the county needs to be EMA-wise. We'd like to take that out of that position out of, and it's out of, in, in, these, in this proposal you have, it is, it is taken out of 911. Um, as the operations manager, we'd like to have a new position under EMA that's uh, assistant deputy EMA director that's full-time dedicated to EMA. Um, and that's proposed at around, any of these numbers are on the high end that you have in the budget, so we're, we're forecasting on the top end, it would be based on qualifications experience, but we've, we've placed 65,000 in there for that um, as that request. And then the letter just explains that, you know, that we um, feel like this would be better for, better for the county to have somebody that can, there's a lot of things that, that need to happen in EMA that we just, we just can't get to because of what, everything that we're doing outside of that. I mean, we do, we feel like we do a pretty good job of, of at least, you know, covering all the, uh, the important things and the disasters and stuff like that. Curtis does a great job with the paperwork and the grants. Um, and it's, it, we've made it work, but I, I do think that this is a consideration that needs to be looked at. Uh, so, um, and again, when you flip to, uh, when you look behind the letter, again, that's the breakdown of what applies to emergency management. Um, and then uh, uh, option, and that option two is, is simply the, and at the top under each thing you'll see option two is just the 5% the increase. It really doesn't, uh, again, it doesn't apply to this because it's in the fire department budget coming and coming this way. So. That's the numbers you'd see there, and then option three is uh, is, is just as is. Okay, so on the EMA, you also got in these options building improvements at eighty thousand. Is that no? That's a, that's a, just a duplicate. Okay, that's yeah, sorry okay. about that. Okay. Same building. We don't need to do it twice. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Any questions on the EMA proposal? Okay, so you want to jump over and do the fire department next? Uh, this proposal, is the format is the, is the same. It's going to flow exactly like now. EMA did 
So you have a, a table of contents again that helps you quickly reference the tabs. And in this this proposal, there's there's 11 options. I know I know it. Yeah, I know it sounds like a lot, but they simply just they simply just go down the list again with with the request for pay increases um, down to current budget with no pay increases. Um, the main uh, components and key components that um, that we're looking for, um, we're asking for three additional firefighters. Uh, our goal, obviously, as we've talked about in years past, is to ultimately end up with a minimum staffing at each fire station of three personnel. We only have that at one station currently, uh, so we're just looking to build on that and also uh, coexist with the need to shore up our ISO rating. Um, and again, I want to be clear so everybody understands, we're asking for this. It doesn't mean that it has to happen this year, um, but it's my job to make you aware and be an advisor as far as that goes. Um, as far as the safety side of things, it greatly helps us on the fire ground. But uh, when a fire truck pulls up, you have somebody driving the fire truck, then you, have, you want to have two firefighters that can come off working as a team, working together. Um, most of the time we have two people, so one's pumping the truck, one starting to get things ready until the second and third unit gets there to, to assist in that. So I think you, you'll find um, across the country that's, that's the general practice is, is three personnel at, min, at a minimum. Um, back to the ISO uh, comment, we don't, we were supposed to be evaluated in November, haven't heard anything from them. Um, I heard a rumor that they were that due to their staffing that we were going to go from every four years to seven years. I have not been formally uh, notified of that, but it seems like that might be what's what's happening. Um, so keep in mind as I as I as each year I'll request additional firefighters. Um, we will if if it gets if it gets cut or we end up when we have an evaluation and, and let's just say we end up because we're barely we're, ma we're barely maintaining our three right now and let's say we end up a point shy they will give us the opportunity uh, to write a plan out without affecting the community um, to improve what we need to improve and I can tell you that in our ISO evaluation the, the only thing that's going to improve ours is personnel because personnel improves response, which is what they call deployment analysis, and that's what moves us into a better range. And again, we're not trying to get anywhere close to a two, we're just trying to shore up that, that three that we have, because it's, it's a good community rating, uh, but we're, we're barely there. So the three personnel is just, uh, is there, uh, number one, for the firefighter safety, and then uh, also to help shore up our ISO rating. Uh, number two is a diesel mechanic that's a ASC certified and emergency vehicle technician. Um, and as you as you look through, there'll be a, there'll be a tab in the back that, if you remember, I did a internal study um, where we took at that time, and I've got a copy of it in here, but it, we took the uh, current number of work orders that were out there and individualized the. Um, so one work order may have six different uh, items on it that need to be repaired. So we broke it down, and that number comes in that a, that a mobile uh, EVT, and so everybody understands the emergency vehicle technician is, uh, is somebody that can work on the pumps, the fire pumps, emergency lighting. Um, there's a, the lab, the aerial. There's a lot to the components of the fire apparatus, and we're outsourcing uh, tens of thousands of dollars each year to get those repairs and it also <coughs> delays so if, if an engine has to go to the or a pumper has to go to the shop and it, it's there for two or three weeks that's also delaying anything else because then it has to be scheduled with uh, if it has a pump issue as well it has to be scheduled with our outsourced uh, vendor and then we're on their time mm -hmm. and then of course we're paying for um, markup on parts and uh, a higher, obviously a, way, a higher labor rate. Um, we spend about, um, we pay the county, the fire department pays the county shop over 27,000 a year in labor. So when you start looking at the numbers and you start bringing that number back, along with outsourcing of 
these uh, these other um, items that need to be fixed, then it, it to me it makes sense to give to, to try this. If it if it doesn't work, I'll be the first to admit it. And, but I really think that um, efficiency wise, being, having somebody we have the we have the truck. There may be a couple things we have to purchase an air compressor on the truck and some things like that. But when you you know currently. If we have if we have something go down on a Thursday evening, then we're not getting it's not going to be even looked at until Monday, and then it's going to be scheduled to be fixed. We've had to call in you know tires to be replaced, stuff like that, where we can we can make that possible with the with the EVT. So asking you to consider consider that, um, and then at number three is a five percent pay increase. Uh, and then again, it goes down. It's going to it's going to go five, four, three, two, and then no pay increase as you go through this. As far as the numbers work, um, number four is capital purchases. Um, our current so we have the three story. If you've been to the training facility at headquarters, you've seen the three story tower that we get credit for in ISO. We have to have that tower. It has a a single, a very small single uh, live fire room in it for training that has paginite two by four tiles in it. Those tiles are four hundred dollars a piece to replace, and they they crack. We can't we can't hardly get it. The uh, a, a minimum amount of heat it just start starts um, uh, cracking those tiles, and we just can't afford to replace those. Um, so. What we've done in the past, what other departments have done, is use shipping containers as live fire um, buildings. And we currently had two, we have, we've had two at Station 5 in Wallaceville for a long time, and they are rusted, rusted through, and I've got some pictures of it in here. Um, they're out of service. They have, we, we're having to travel now if we, if we uh, exceed anything besides what we can minim minimally do in that, in that room but we're required to do above grade and below grade fire attacks um, multiple room attacks and make that a part of our training uh, not to mention that we we use this uh, and we we need this because we we do this a lot we have a lot of training that that helps that helps prepare the firefighters um, so we're proposing that and, and we'll go through it here in a second but we're proposing that we buy uh, there's a local vendor that has, has a, they will deliver them for $3,100 a piece, which is incredible because it's generally uh, four to $5,000 a piece not delivered. And as you know, those are not, those are, those have to be on an 18 wheeler and you gotta be able to lift them off either a crane or a, uh, some type of equipment to, to, to chain it and pick it up and set it down. Um, so, we're, we're, we definitely need to make sure that we we can get this um, building. I'm going to go over where we're going to what we're going to do with it in a minute. And then the uh, other one under number four under capital purchases is a command vehicle. If you remember, we started a vehicle replacement program several years ago, and we were buying at that time we had the need to buy one each year. Um, we backing up two years ago now we were able to go to every other year. We don't have to buy that every year now, um, and we don't have any. We didn't buy one in this current budget, so we're due for that next uh, vehicle in the 2025. So as you go through tabs, uh, you look at tab three. Everything's the same; just goes to four percent pay increase. Um, tab four goes to three percent. Um, tab five. Um, takes out the uh, three firefighter positions. So again, I'm just showing you as you cut things, you will be able to see the numbers from the summary or on each individual page. So option five takes out the uh, three firefighters, still has the, the EVT mechanic, 5%, back to 5%. Each, per, each change starts over 5%, uh, the two capital purchases. Um, six goes down to the four percent. Seven goes down to the three percent. Eight then cuts out the EVT and the uh, three firefighters, and it goes again 
at five percent, still keeping the capital. It goes uh, on nine, it goes to four. On ten, it goes to three. Uh, on eleven, it goes to two percent increase with the capital purchases, and then uh, twelve is no pay increases, but the capital purchases are still included. So when you flip when you flip through thirteen, it just gives a capital outlay. Um, our our uh, we have a two hundred thousand dollar line item that we have each year for. Um, Items that we have to that we that we have to replace as far as our equipment replacement program, such as firefighting gear, SCBA harnesses and cylinders, extrication equipment, and you see on there I've got extrication equipment or air fill station. This is a dynamic sheet. Um, our we bought a new system that's at Chickamauga, but the one in our training center is it's not doing well. We're going to try to get everything we can out of it, but at the time if this gets approved, at the time that we need to purchase uh, or start using the capital, it, it may expire uh, and end its service life, and then we would have to forego extrication equipment to get the need for that uh, based on budget numbers. Um, we're putting in the, this year for a rescue drone. We, we have to call Hamilton County for a drone with the, uh, we have we have used them, uh, Chief Arrows here, we, we've probably used them a half a dozen times at least in the last couple of years, whether it's a recovery or a rescue. Um, so the, it's, not a, it's not a real expensive purchase, uh, and it's definitely a need that, 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 we need, that we need to do. And then we've got um, apparatus equipment and PPE, that's just miscellaneous items that we have to replace every year. Uh, the command vehicles, uh, in the cost sheet next, it's uh, we'll go with we'll, this year. We'd be going with the F two fifty, and then the equipment to, that it needs to outfit it for command purposes. Um, the the capital layout for the burn building is in here. Gives you the, the cost of the shipping containers, uh, what demo would be permits that we have to, to get through the county. Um, uh, stair, there'll be a couple sets of stairs that have to go on it, doors and windows, paint, uh, line item for miscellaneous. Um, there is a, a volunteer firefighter in uh, Catoosa County that built theirs. He has a business and he, he built theirs. So I, I talked with him about cost to put these five units together because you'll have three on bottom. I'll show you a picture of them in a second. But there'll be five, three on bottom, two on top. So we get our above grade and below grade, we can go upstairs and then we can access the outside stair set to then go below grade to the bottom containers to get um, that training. Uh, but it's, um, that cost in there for labor and fabrications in there, uh, gravel, and then if we have, if money allows, then we'd like to concrete 10 feet around the, the building. Back where the old one is, you're going to move it down to the... No, sir, I'm glad you asked. So, go to tab 15. That's a picture. The first picture is a picture of our existing uh, out-of-service boxes. You flip the page, you'll see. Uh, it's hard to see, but the, where I've got that arrow pointing, it, that's rusted through and through. Um, and that's, that's throughout the entire thing. Um, the next page is the paginite tiles in the existing uh, tower. Um, and again, to replace every tile in there is over $35,000. It's just not worth that when we can use the boxes. And these, these, these uh, shipping containers last years. So, so flip the next page, you'll see uh, a drone shot of our training center, and there are, there, there are two buildings. If you're familiar, there's the the where it says new teaching shed. That that's the old fire marshal's office. We've got an office or two in there for cert and our volunteers. But on the the top side, where it's in orange, where it says new location for for fire training building, that is an existing what we call teaching shed, which is a pavilion basically. An open area with a roof 
under it. So if it's rain or anything, we can get instruction done underneath it. Um, it has eight to 10 inches of concrete already there. It's wide enough, it's big enough for the pad for those buildings. So we're gonna, we're proposing to demo that back to uh, a little over half of that building. We're gonna demo it back. We'll keep the rest of that building for storage, but we would place the five containers where that orange square is. Um, again, on an existing pad, saving us money for that uh, installation. And then um, we've got the yellow square on the existing building. We don't need all of that space office-wise, so we're, we're gonna take that back and create a new teaching shed there. It's already got the roof. All these buildings have new, except the exception of the, the building with the orange square, all the buildings on that complex have had a, a new roof in the last couple of years. So, but we're gonna take that existing building back uh, and create a new teaching shed there. And then I've got marked on there is the high voltage lines that run across. They had to set a transformer uh, in the middle of the property and train ground with these, these wires are pretty low hanging. And then there's power where we don't need it anymore. Um, so we would, uh, have that removed and that's also a safety improvement on that training ground. If you flip the page again, I've got a picture of Catoosa County so you kind of see I, I numbered, numbered them in hopes you could see the elevation change in them so you can see that there's three three boxes on, on bottom and then two on top. Um, then the stairs on the ex on the exterior. That's that's a picture of what they have. And then the next page is uh, a CAD drawing of ours that's laid out, so you can see what we're going to do, how we're going to put it together. And and again, this is me up here today uh, talking to you, but this is a a huge team effort that everybody uh, all the way up till this morning. So. Um, can't thank everybody enough for all the help that they, they give me. Um, makes it easy for me to get up here and present it to you. Um, and then, it, then I've got just a, I've got a, uh, a quote from the vendor that had that price on the boxes. So what do you anticipate the projected revenue from the public safety fee to be? It's, this it's, cycle? it's in there. I've, I've, I've got it up. This is an updated number from the tax assessor's office. Well, so, because that's the five million. If, if you look at op, just look at the summary page, you can look at option one. The public safety fee is projected. That's a billable. So we all know it always collects a hundred percent, but it may collect ninety-eight this year, two percent into the next year. But it, it, it generally always collects. But um, the billable, and this includes what the fire department bills out for abated properties and tax exempt properties, because they still get charged the fire fee, even though they're not paying taxes. So the five, the five million nine fifty five is what is, is what is billable. And that's an updated number as of last week from the tax assessor. And so if you look, as you watch this flow down the summary page, you'll see that amount stays constant on every option, but then you're going to see the general fund transfer. And I've got the only two places I know that, that to get his general fund transfer or the insurance premium rebate. Um, so I've just I've just made that mark in there, but you'll see that the, an option one that it's um, the general fund transfer or the insurance premium. This is without an increase in the public safety fee um, would need to be supported if option one was approved of 426,000. As you go through your summary and you look down through option two through 11, you'll see that that general fund transfer is going down. So each option that's cut, obviously it goes down. But it ends up at option 11, um, still needing uh, $20,000. You're saying even at option 11, we need to raise the, the, the uh, public safety fee. That would be up. That, that's the, if we use what, I'm, yeah, what I'm saying is public safety fee would, would not support it. Money. What's in there? The, uh, well, the, the total insurance premium rebate check. Totally. But yes, yeah, sir. The 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 option eleven, the public safety fee would not cover it. Be twenty thousand dollars shy if collected one hundred percent. So it would need a general fund transfer of twenty thousand dollars. 
And you could also use that in terms of premium if the board decided to. You guys can do whatever you want. But it's it's uh, look well an example an example would be that this last budget we used ARPA funding on some of the capital, so it was a decrease in that line item in the current budget, and we used ARPA to help support it in in lieu of going up on the fire fee. Any other questions? All right. Appreciate the presentation. Very good. There's Jennifer. She just walked in. Oh, good. Okay, <laughs> perfect timing, Miss Jennifer. Well, that was good timing. Okay, Miss Jennifer, if you'd like to come up, this is with our Ag Extension office. We've got to talk for two hours. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have a copy of the budget that was submitted? We do, yes. Yeah. Jennifer Meeks and I am here today to represent the UGA Extension Office here in Walker County. Our office is known by many different titles. Um, some people refer to us as the Ag Extension Office, the County Agents Office, or the 4-H Office, um, and more formally we are known as the Cooperative Extension Service because we are a cooperative effort between the University of Georgia and every county in the state of Georgia. Um, our focus is to provide research-based information on agriculture and environmental sciences, family and consumer sciences, and 4-H and youth development. Um, here in Walker County, in our office, um, we do have one county agent um, who is in charge of agriculture and natural resources. His name is Wade Hutchison. Um, and on your handout, you can see um, this highlights some of our um, county statistics over the past year, as well as the statewide statistics. Um, but Wade, um, he does provide consultations to farmers and homeowners. Um, he teaches classes, he does farm and site visits, commodity meetings. Um, people come to our office to bring soil and um, hay and water to be tested through the labs of the University of Georgia. Um, and Wade also does help with local field days and festivals. Most recently, um, he helped this weekend to facilitate the educational seminars at the Homebee Festival um, in Lafayette. Um, most people are familiar with the 4-H program, and we do have two 4-H staff members. We have one county agent, Casey Hobbs, and one 4-H program assistant, Kelly Wilson. And um, they reach over 1,400 youth in Walker County, um, and they teach them public speaking, and they do competitive teams, and of course summer camp, um, which they rolled out of our parking lot for this morning. Um, the 4-H program has also expanded um, to include a robotics team, and that team competed on the world level last year. And our last program area is Family and Consumer Sciences. That is represented by one staff member. Um, it is a grant-funded program. Um, her name is Rebecca Hamilton, and she teaches low-income families and high school students in the county. Um, and she was actually recognized this spring by the university as the program assistant of the year. So um, we are very proud of Rebecca for that recognition. And our office is under the leadership of a county extension coordinator. Most recently that was Greg Bowman um, from Gordon County. Friday was actually his last day. Um, so now we are under the leadership of Caleb Milliken from Catoosa County. Um, today was his first official day, but he uh, was assigned to 4-H camp, so that is why I am here. <laughs> um, Really, our budget, especially compared to Blake's, um, is, is fairly simple, and um, we only had um, one line item that had a change uh, for this year, 
and that um, is called the Technical Contractual Services, and that is our 4-H Program Assistant Salary. She is funded, um, half of her salary comes from the Walker County Board of Education, and half of it comes um, from Walker County. The Board of Education um, did inform us that the cost of their benefits would be raising this year, and so that's why we are requesting an increase of $1,500 on that line item only. Um, everything else remains the same. Have any questions about anything? I do. Okay. So, when was this published? Because our county gate value has gone up about thirty thousand dollars since I last seen that. Yes, I believe um, that this was last year's. Okay. Numbers. Yeah, twenty twenty three. And I am working on your handout for the chamber to give you the updated. Yeah. Numbers. Okay. Yeah. Because Wade told me it had gone up, but I didn't know it had gone up that much. Because the last handout we had was ninety three million or something. Yeah. And now it's one twenty six. Instead of talking about it, still in the in the poultry. Industry. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it. I did want to ask too. I, I was just noticing on the handout, it's talking about uh, through our, the supporting citizens and reaching. 5,083 5, clients, so that, that's not including the 1,400 uh, 4-Hers and then anything else, so. No, that is agriculture only. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, gotcha, I gotcha. All right. Any other questions for Jennifer? No. Perfect. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Good presentation. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Jennifer. Very good. Appreciate it. Okay, well, that concludes the departments and elected officials and other government agencies that are part of our budget. I think there's about 21 or 22 of those today. Appreciate each one of them putting in the time and the resources to pull that information together. Uh, with that, that's approaching about a $6 million ask or increase over current funding levels. So that's about a 20% increase across just those departments. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of work yet still to be done because we have to examine a $6 million ask, and this does not even include all the departments at this moment. These are just the ones listed, so there's quite a few other departments uh, still to consider. So this uh, video will be shown as soon as Joe can get it published on our YouTube channel so there's other people that wasn't here today. I know some of our commissioners had to be in and out a couple of times, so this will be on the YouTube channel where people can watch this or go back and re-watch segments of this in the near future. Once Joe gets that published, he'll let the public know on our Facebook page. So we knew it would be uh, hard to live stream a full day. And actually, as it turned out, since we ended up ahead of schedule, it worked out better where he can go back and edit out and shorten it up and take all the dead spots out. So at this time, if there's no further action to discuss, we'll stand adjourned. Thanks, Thank sir. you.